Motorola's customizable Moto X is cool, but is customization cool enough to become a standard? We'll talk about that. Plus, Google and Microsoft. Isn't it about time they just grew up? And HTC might have more phones up its sleeve in the days ahead. All that and more. Plus, your listener mail in the 90 minutes ahead on episode 58 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once a week podcast from Pocket Now where we discuss smartphones, tablets, and the state of mobile technology in 2013. I'm your host, Michael Fisher, Editorial Director at Pocket Now. Hello. And today, I'm joined by our very own motorcycle riding news desk runner, Stephen Schenk. Good morning to you. That is the coolest introduction I have ever been uh, <laughs> privileged of receiving. Well, you're welcome, sir. Uh, you, you know, I like to add as many adjectives as I can before your name. Keep them coming. And by the man too busy to take a vacation, so he's just crabby all the time, Senior Editor Taylor Martin, who has the consumption today. Good morning to you. What do you want? <laughs> Get off my lawn. Get a rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor has a cough. He will be making liberal use of his cough button today. I'm sorry that you are under the weather, senior yeah, editor I, Taylor I, Martin. I just used it, actually, as you were saying that. Did you really? So, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I just I forgot to boost my gain, so hopefully the levels will will uh, will stay all right. We have some things to talk about today. We skipped listener mail last week, as uh, listeners will no doubt recall. And I want to say, like, this is a, it's actually pretty cool. We used to complain about like <laughs> when we first started doing listener mail and we first started doing the show. Like, we'd get like two pieces a week, and they were always from the same people. And we loved the repeat action, but it was like, oh, man, no one's ever going to write in. This is great. Now, like, every week we have a sizable heap of mail that comes in, so it's it's nice to be able to deal with that. Uh, half of them are me trolling, but that's Is that right? Is it, <laughs> <laughs> is it half of you? Half of them are you writing in in barely intelligible giant blocks of text? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I use names that are not phonetic whatsoever. <laughs> oh. um, to get a little extra attention, that's good. Yeah, yeah, no, that's important. You just stand out from the crowd. Anyway, yeah. so, so everyone, thank you for, for writing in, and we, uh, we appreciate it. It's also a nice measure of the podcast's increasing penetration into uh, culture at large, and uh, we like that. A podcast realm. That's right. Uh, and yeah. unfortunately, it's not... Uh, we, we would like we would like even more. We will remind you, please, to keep your uh, email brief, but email us at podcast dot at pocketnow dot com. And uh, just don't you guys hate? Have you ever watched one of those PBS uh, fundraising drives where they've got like the forty people behind the phones and some dude has been standing up there for thirteen hours, going, you know, if you just propel us up to a thousand more dollars, folks, we can all go home. A telephone to needs to hire a these telethon. people. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Well, that, that's the thing. I don't want to have a telethon. I think they're they're lame. Um, but Brandon asked me. This is a little little behind the scenes action. I didn't I didn't really clear this for release. But Brandon asked me yesterday. We were kind of talking about the state of things, and we were talking about the weekly. And he was like, "Yeah, do you think? Um, do you, we were thinking of maybe putting it on hiatus, like like the live. Uh, you know, just to just to see what that does to uh, audience interest." And I was like, "No." No, that's the worst possible thing. The weekly is the most consistent thing we have going. I mean, we've never missed a week in over a year, which is nice, right? Oh, well, man. knock on consistent wood. Yeah. On, on weeklies, but not on the actual day of the week. Well, not on the day of the week, no. But I mean, I don't. Who cares about that? We're too busy for that. But no. So, uh, if you listeners, if you have no interest in seeing the Pocket Now Weekly disappear or be rescheduled or take a hiatus, please do uh, continue to not only write in and listen and thank you for your listenership, but also. So tell your friends so we don't have to have a stupid telethon because that would be the lamest moment in Pocket Now history. Not if we do it live. That might be fun. Actually, it would kind of be cool to do a telethon, wouldn't it? <laughs> Star-studded celebrity guests, yeah. Yeah. We should yeah. do a stunt podcast. We should do a 24-hour podcast uh, on one of these big, heavy mobile days. Oh my With, God. like, the Foo Fighters? <laughs> what, wait, did the Foo Fighters <laughs> do a 24-hour podcast? What? No, the Foo Fighters took over MTV for 24 hours back in yeah, the early did. Are you serious? That's awesome. Normally I would be like, that's stupid, but the Foo Fighters kind of can't do anything wrong, right? Except for making music. Know. Like, hour 22, wow. it might have got a little wow. wonky. Yeah, well, it would be. Anything does. Uh, th anyway, so let's let's move on to this week's Pocket Now Weekly's uh, the, the Meat of the Matter. Right after I say, hey, Taylor, thanks for Instagramming again. 
Yay! Yay! Can I interrupt? Of course I can. Yeah, Because go, I'm going go, to go. anyway. Uh, Bradley Manning has 35 years in prison, so the guy who leaked all the information. 35 years. years. I guess that's better than treason, but... Wow. Well, no, 35 uh, years in prison. Was it 90 was on the table? Yeah, something like years that. Was it, yeah. Wow. Wow, yeah. that's intense. Is that breaking news right now? Yeah. Wow. Broke a couple minutes ago. Wow. One of these days, uh, we'll, we'll, we will branch out and we will, we will have shows talking about current affairs outside the technology realm. I mean, even though this touches on that aspect, but uh, that's intense. We could probably talk yeah. about that for hours. But we, could. we could. We could. But let's talk about <laughs> stuff and things that we got in the past couple of days because yeah. I want to talk about that. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, d- Taylor, I, I did want to say publicly thank you for Instagramming because I was looking at the Pocket Now Instagram account. I'm like, man, we ain't posted a square picture in like three days. And then Taylor posted three. So, yay. Stay tuned for that because I've got more dorky things to post on the Pocket Now Instagram account. But um, that is going to do it for our lead in. And let's jump into the actual. Let's let's get to the heart of the matter. We got Taylor got a package like what six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it. Yeah, T- Taylor and I both have received uh, packages from Motorola recently. As anyone reading the site should know, I think by the time this show goes up, our collaborative piece should be up. Am I correct? Uh, probably I, I not. <laughs> Oh, no? Oh, wait, yeah, based on it? the tone of that response, I wouldn't bet on it, too. <laughs> very, very it. observant, Tony Steven, told me right. not to write it yet. So oh, I, I, thought you, it. I thought you had written it. You were just waiting for my video. Okay, so this is going to go up soon in the near future. Uh, today. It'll it, be today. Okay. Furious typing in the background of the podcast the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, it has been decided. It had been decided that um, I was supposed to receive my Moto X on Monday, my customized version of the Moto X, uh, which Motorola kindly furnished us with. Uh, and so were a lot of other people, and many people did get them on Monday. Taylor received his, and you may have seen it on our Instagram account or Twitter, or whatever. But mine didn't come in, and uh, Motorola was very apologetic, and they were very cool. Um, so they they finally sent it, and I actually saw a tweet from Josh Topolsky at like 1 a.m. last night. Did you guys see it? Where no, no. I'm about to look it up. It was hilarious. I, I'm I'm going through my Twitter feed trying to fall asleep after a great night of dinner and wine and stuff. And Josh Topolsky posts um, something like, Motorola seriously just left a FedEx package on my door at 1 a.m. This is what? seriously a thing that happened. And I was like, whoa, that's hilarious. And I'm then I'm sitting in bed and I'm getting all indignant because I'm like, wait, where, well, where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> and I wake up this morning to find a, um, not just a FedEx box, but a FedEx box. A FedEx box in, like, a transparent plastic dew bag, like a bag to yeah, pre- yeah. prevent the settling of dew on it. And I'm like, wow, wow, mine, mine, too, arrived in the middle of the night. I should have gone down to check. I could have done a... It's like Santa Claus. <laughs> I know. Man. I could have done a 2 a.m. mildly buzzed and fully exhausted unboxing. Wouldn't that have been hilarious? That would have been great. But <laughs> yeah. can I can I just vent about something for a second? Sure. Please do. Yeah. Why is everybody still calling... The, the custom signature on the back of the Moto X, an engraving. Oh, my God. It's not an engraving. Even even Joshua Topolsky said, and here's my Moto X engraving. It's well, obviously I, not an engraving. It's not engraved. I call it it's an engraving. It's a what? digital print. Oh, all right. Yeah, but, I mean, I, it's, it looks like an engraving. I want to explain that a little bit. It sticks out. It sticks out from the <laughs> – engraving means you have to dig something <laughs> out of the actual chassis. Oh. This is actually printed on it. <laughs> there was something going around in the comments yesterday where um, Apple's engraving was being brought up. The, the, the laser writing on the back of your phones. And you know what? I, I wouldn't bet consider people... that engraving either. Yeah. Or, well, That's yeah, but what does etching. that do? Does that? Oh, it's etching, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I draw a line between etching and engraving. Engraving's physically carving something into yeah. something. Etching could be acid, could be lasers. <laughs> hold up. It could also hold be up, carving. Hold up, Paul. I want the listeners to to understand the story <laughs> that is kicking us into this thing. And the story is written by Stephen Shank. And you know what the headline is? Moto X custom engraving hits a snag. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what? Wait. Hold, how are you? SEO. How, how are you Motorola combining? insists this is quote unquote engraving. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. They're okay. talking about how this isn't working right. Maybe this, you know, digital printing is a stopgap. I mentioned. I, I have a feeling they're playing really, really flexibly with the word engraving, and it's like you guys are saying, it's just the printing, but. Yeah, yeah it, that's it, what they're calling it. I gave them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Well, you know, it looks good. Uh, Ka- uh, Taylor has some engraving above his AT&T globe on the back of his unit. 
Uh, he's got his trademark Casper Tech up there. And, you know, I think it looks good. I think they chose a nice font for it. I think it's, you know, subtle without being invisible, but it's certainly not overpowering. No, and did you guys have any choice over font or text color? When no, you were no, using these? no, no choice oh. in font. I was actually just about to ask if there was a choice in text color because it looks like Taylor's no. is almost blue. But is, is that an effect of the photo? Yeah, it's the same color, a little darker than the AT and T logo. All right, so it it's, is it's like it's yeah. a it's a dark gray. Okay, but uh, but yeah, um, I, I don't know. It's just driving me nuts. It's not engraved. Yeah, well, you uh, know, and I'm Josh glad it's was, not engraved because it's not like it's metal, right? I mean, you wouldn't want to, you know, you couldn't etch this whatever this polycarbonate, this microweave is. It's not a you, weave. You could engrave it, but. Uh, Joshua Topolsky's, you're going to like it. I don't know if you saw it, but his says powered by WebOS on the back. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh that's awesome. So I didn't, I didn't do any, um, any etching or, or laser shooting or whatever. Branding. It. Yeah, I didn't do any 3D printing on the back of my phone. I just, did, uh, I just left the globe there unadorned because I was a chicken. So sad face. I wonder if they got my Motor One Thirty Seven boot uh, thing though. So you can they choose. Got mine. Did they? So yeah. you, they can. You can choose, listeners, a uh, a custom wallpaper and so forth. But you can also choose a string of text to appear on your boot screen. And I didn't notice. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, hashtag Moto One Thirty Seven under the Moto Globe. That's awesome. Why One Thirty Seven? So <laughs> were you not were you not privy to what happened there? Uh, apparently not. There was a bit of a, a, a kind of a PR um, a snafu. snafu where um, it was somehow every, uh, 137 tech editors ended up on the same mass email that was not, uh. not BCC'd. And um, Joshua Tobolsky responded on behalf of everyone and, and <laughs> agreed to whatever was being asked. And uh, it, was, it was very, very funny. It was a party for like a day. Uh-huh. I thought it was a very obscure reference to the movie Empire Records. But... <laughs> Ooh, either way, maybe maybe there's a double play at action there. I don't know who knows, but either way, uh, Taylor and I both have our Moto X's now. Taylor's is cement with orange accents. Mine is royal blue with yellow accents and a white face. And Taylor, yours is a white face as well. Black. Yours is a black face. So here's my thing, guys. I love the back of my phone. Uh, I love the accent color in yellow. I think it's a very classy move. I'm a pretty stylish guy. But I don't know how I feel about this white faceplate. It looks like the Nexus 4 does from the front in white with those penetrations alongside the earpiece <clears throat> for the camera and the sensors and the microphone down below and the black screen. I, I, I just don't know how I feel about it. And that's not terribly interesting in and of itself. Who cares about really that issue? But as a broader component of customizing your own phone, man, and it's not Motomaker's fault because it shows you what the phone's going to look like, but you get this thing in the mail, you better freaking like it. Because it it's going to be this you have a, way for you have a, a fourteen day return policy. I think oh, it's well, true. it's thirty day, isn't it? Fourteen. Oh, Jaime said thirty day on the pocket now daily. I didn't look at the documentation, but what, what was that, Stephen? Um, do you wish that there were more options for the face color? Is that I, I it? I do. I really do wish there were more options for the face color, and I, I understand kind of wanna... they had to like limit it to some degree. Yeah. But it's just when you can only choose between black and white. And listen, I know this is like the epitome of a first world problem, right? You have, you have like 250 <laughs> color combinations. It's like, oh, how do they make this more customizable? Like, I get this is a stupid thing to complain about. But, it, you know, the face of the phone is what you're looking at more often than not, right? Yes. And to have to, it's, it's just eerily reminiscent of eerily. No, it's not. It's just reminiscent of other devices that have only given you a white and black color choice. Exactly. It's like there's been this little asterisk in the industry next to any time we hear about new color options coming, except probably not the front of the phone. Right. We just accept it at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that wild? I, I don't know. So uh, I'm not complaining. Um, have... All I'm saying is it's, it's it's an interesting feeling to take the device out of the box and be like, wow, this is the thing I'm going to be living with for, for the next two years. And no, it's not a case. You know, it's not anything I can change. I made my choice and now I have to live with it. You can put a case I... on top of it. Yeah, if you want to be one of those <laughs> lame-os. What's that, Taylor? 
I have the return policy here. Uh, okay. Be happy with your Motorola phone. If you aren't, you usually have usually have up to 14 days. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. You usually have up to 14 days, 30 in California, to return an undamaged phone in its original packaging for a refund. After that, you can still send us your phone to be repaired under warranty. Okay, so you can get a refund. What Can you, like, w- but they don't offer you to make a new one? Like to make <laughs> a different customized one? I think that's between the I ones. have no idea. Wow. If you get a refund, you can just order a new one. Yeah, well, yeah. true, true. Yeah. It just seems mm. to be going around your whatever to get to your wherever. But, yep. uh, yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, that's cool. Um, so, usually. <laughs> usually, <laughs> yeah. So this, is, so this is the thing. So we both have custom phones now. We we're going to have a piece up describing our custom phone experience with a video from me looking very, very tired because I had just woken up. Um, but... And by the way, I'm having an authentication problem on my Moto X, which is why I'm a little distracted right now. I'm like, come on, connect. I want to use you. But here's the thing. This customization stuff is really cool. We've established that in the initial review. Taylor and I established it again with our Moto Maker tour last week. This is cool stuff. But is it the future? Are other manufacturers going to do this? I Uh, think so. And I probably... I hope they will. I mean, you think about it. If HTC was that close to doing it and Motorola did it and it turns out to be lucrative, yeah. I mean, I don't think the Moto X will be one of the most popular phones ever. It should be. It should be, but it won't. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone else is going to do it as well as Motorola is with the four-day turnaround time. I don't think people are going to commit to you know u.s assembly plants just for a custom phone so it might take a little longer or fewer options but i can see other people doing it but but does anybody care about that turnaround time of four days what if it's a week do you really care well i I gotta figure though like you you, and motorola may be owned by google and they may have a lot of money to spend but i i gotta figure they did a lot of studies and they i think they said something like this at the launch event they were like most people said that they wouldn't do this unless there could be a turnaround time of less than uh, four days or less and that i i can get that right because when you order something look at how much we complain when we have to wait at all for any bits of first of all consumer products second of all especially electronics updates yeah, and update like if you wait a week, like it, it's not. This isn't true, but it, it feels like it's like if you wait a week, your device is already outdated. Like <laughs> when you order something, you want it yesterday, right? So, uh, but I think in the long term, companies could, um, you know, sprout up fabrication centers like the one in Fort Worth uh, over over time. But it seems like we have a divergence of of opinion. Um, I. I I think that HTC... Do we know why HTC didn't do that with the 8XT, Stephen? Or- oh, we, know we, we saw that leak of the uh, their own little customization site. Mm-hmm. I think they just decided it would be more trouble than it was worth. I mean, not having seen the success that Motorola seems to be getting, or at least you know public recognition of this new feature. Right. I think HTC just didn't want to take the gamble itself. Yeah, I will, it, and we don't know if it was HTC or Sprint that canceled it, actually, mm. even, right? Because that could have been a carrier thing, too. Who knows? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna ask a question of you two. Um, if you could get a truly customized phone, so yes, you can pick colors, but they're preset here. Um, so you have 18 rear colors, seven accent colors, two faced colors, and you can add some things like a custom signature, a custom boot animation, not animation, but custom boot text string. Yeah, yeah. So you can do various things with it to make it yours to personalize it. But if you could do something truly customized. So, you know the back I have on my iPhone 5, the Casper Tech logo. Mm -hmm. If you could get a phone with that covering on the back, like just, boom, built into the back, would you wait longer? I mean, I would wait for two weeks for that. I think, yeah, if you're talking about a logo or something beyond a string of text, yeah, I I, I would wait longer for that, sure. If I could get a phone with a back that looked like a trapper keeper with, like, dolphins (laughs) jumping over pyramids and lasers, I would wait a month for that. If I could get a composition notebook back, I would wait a year. Yeah, yeah. So my, my problem with this is that this isn't true, true customization. It's It's a preset selection basically right. um what what i would love for a manufacturer to do is to offer a broad color palette uh maybe um what are those colors the standardized colors pantone. That I can, yeah pantone and just say here pick this don't i mean the problem is getting the right color actual oh, dear uh, god yeah well, they'd have to pour like custom colors they would have to have like just yeah. molds ready to pour plastic into on demand like it would take forever 
Well, yeah. But who cares? We, we're consumers. <laughs> we can demand anything we That's want. That's right. Well, you know what? Actually, and, and it's it, you do bring up a good point. It's not just complaining. It's like other manufacturers can't just roll up onto the scene if they want to compete here and say, okay, we're doing the same thing. They have to one-up Motorola, right? So yeah. maybe that's there's an opportunity there, not necessarily in the in the Pantone no. colors. Yeah, not yeah. all Pantone colors, no. obviously. That, but there's an opportunity we, we to offer, offer more. Million but, like, <laughs> yeah. but like bespoke phones as an industry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, you know, I think yeah, there's an opportunity here for somebody else to jump in, and uh, I think it would be pretty cool to see not just Samsung decide they want to do this and, like, build a plant overnight because they have billions of dollars, but to see a new player come into the industry. We, we've seen a lot of new players try to break in based on software and hardware differentiation, but to see a new player come in and be like, okay, we're going to outdo Motorola as far as customization goes, and yes, it's an Android phone, so we'll keep the cost down on the, on the software side, but here it is on the, on the hardware. You can have it look like however you want. Let's be fair. If yeah. Samsung were to offer a "quote unquote" customization offering, all they would do is allow you to replace the battery door. That, that's what <laughs> they would do. They'd be like, "The rest of the phone is this color. You can choose your battery door cover." <laughs> right. Like well, that's what thanks, Samsung, Samsung would do. Samsung. Yeah. Thanks. Well, yeah. Who it's knows? like a Happy Meal toy. Like you're like, eh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're gonna talk a little more about Samsung later in the show, but yeah, it's. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I think it's going to be cool to see where this goes. I like all the, I like all the speculation that this is kind of this this is generating, and I like the controversy the Moto X continues to stir up because so many people are still so bent out of shape because they're not impressed by the by the X, and I think this is there's still a lot of surprise to be had in this thing because it hasn't launched at all yet, right? We're still no, waiting on an official this 20th. Friday. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I have a question, Michael. Yeah, why don't you tell me it, Taylor? <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, your Moto X, when you turned it on for the first time, did it have the wallpaper you chose? Uh, I haven't even gotten to the point where it has the where I can see my wallpaper yet. I haven't even, oh. um, you know, plugged it. I mean, let's let's get to that. Google. Point. Do you want me to get to that point? Actually, actually, right. actually, can I ask another question? Can we put in the Monty Python intermission music while I do that? <laughs> yes. Um, when you got it, was it completely dead? Uh, it was not. It was at about forty percent. Why? Mine was completely dead, 0% battery when I got it. Really? Somebody left it on in the box, yes. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. Because I, I had the, I, I screenshotted the, the battery, and it dropped, it, it said four days or like three and a half days on battery. So, wow, yeah, it really? was uh, 0% when I got it. The wallpaper I chose online was not set, which I really don't care because I didn't like the wallpaper selection anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, but if you're going to offer it, at least set the wallpaper I asked for. Was it on the phone, just not selected? Yeah. Okay, that's something. Yeah. So the wallpaper selection you can choose online is the set of wallpapers that are on the phone. So they're yeah. they're, they're preset wallpapers. Um, so, well, by we, Google we, account, we, we should make there. we should make clear that the Moto X was still in beta. The Moto Maker was still in beta yeah. when we were using it. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, it was. Not it, it was very much in beta. But the the wallpaper I selected was not there. The Google account that I logged in with with online was not. Yeah, my already set set up. So, so all right. the stuff that they offered uh, as far as software goes, except for the boot screen, was not there. So yeah, let me let me speak to that very quickly because I I've been thinking about this a lot, and I actually said as much in like a one line email to Anton and Taylor a couple of days ago. Um, you know, I I think for some reason. Motorola is is feeling a crunch on this stuff. You know, I don't know oh, yeah. I don't know if they announced it, if Google decided or all right, listen, I'm going to use Google and Motorola terms interchangeably. I don't care that one is owned by the other. It's, it's, it's six of one, half dozen the other. So I don't know if certain elements of the company decided to launch this before it was actually ready. Uh, I don't know if they're, they were trying to hit a back-to-school window or something like that. But the thing is, I don't get the impression Motorola was necessarily ready for the, for the press response that, that it got. And we've seen that in, in, in a, a lot of indications. Now, they've been really cool in dealing with it, and they've been very apologetic when stuff has been messed up. But they definitely seem a bit frantic, don't they, at, at this oh, point, yeah. trying to keep up with this demand. Um, and I, I hope that, what, two days from now, when uh, customer orders start rolling in, they, uh, they correct some of these problems, right? Oh, yeah. And please, Motorola, please do not leave the phone on in the box. <laughs> because when you get a phone and it's completely dead, that is the worst feeling in the world. Because yeah, all you want to do when you get it open is turn it on. Yeah. 
And yeah. uh, oh, that's yeah, that an was... interesting point. Actually, mm. I wonder if that could be part of the uh, the customization process because we know that lithium ion likes to be stored at or around forty percent for long term storage. They don't like to be stored dead. They don't like to be stored fully charged. Uh, I don't know if the LiPo batteries and these things have specific chemistry that changes that preference, but since they're customizing the phones anyway, wouldn't it make sense to throw the things on, on a charger for like two hours before sending them out at the end of the day so that when they arrive, because you know it's not going to be more than four days, uh, when they arrive at a user's doorstep, they're fully charged? That would make some sense. Yeah, it would make sense, but mine, uh, what it looked like was it was about 40%, and the guy, who whoever put it in the box and, and finished all the stuff off, just forgot to turn it off. Yeah. Or maybe that was an assembly line process and nobody touched the phone. Right. No, I get that. But, yeah. but shouldn't off, there but be it? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that be cool if there was an assembly line portion? Like, as if Motorola didn't have enough to do already. But wouldn't it How be about, cool if there was an additional step where it was like, okay, this is customized. Now we're going to charge it. And 90 minutes from now, when it's fully charged, yep. we'll send it out the door. Wait until How they're about, getting everything else done right before we add another step yeah, to that, the, <laughs> the process. A, that's a good point, Steve. <laughs> How about a Moto Maker selection that'll let you choose what charge what you charge want? Level you want? <laughs> if this thing arrives I like a hair over 78%, I'm sending it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, so I, I think this demonstrates not only that a, a company is willing to go out of its way to offer us more customization options, but that consumers will never stop wanting more. Exactly. Right? But I, I'm totally happy. I mean, the stuff that happened to mine was not really big um i mean i plugged it up for a few minutes so i could use it and i yeah. set my own wallpaper anyway you know it wasn't anything major and the uh, the google account that i had to log in with on the moto maker was not the google account i use for android anyway so i mean it was no big deal it was just yeah. for uh, the average consumer having a phone that's actually set up for them and ready to go when they get it is a big deal yeah, and we were looking for a little polish on this. This is yeah. embarrassing almost. Yeah. Well, and, but, but, it's, but it's it is still also in, beta. It's still in the soft launch and it's still beta. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. no, this close to the actual launch, it should not be beta. Is that the problem? Is a good point. This should have been worked out weeks ago. Well, yeah. how did they? How would they test it? You know, I run in a combination of phones. You know, well, I guess they, they did were... test it with the uh, with the. Uh, oh gosh, Guy Kawasaki, because he had a couple of them. Mm -hmm. and he, he unboxed it in slow motion. Did you see that? I didn't see a slow mo unboxing. No, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Well, uh, we're, we're going to talk about it. We're going to keep a close eye on the launch uh, this weekend because I'm a super nerd. I'm sure I will find the time to go into a AT and T retail store and see how that Moto X rollout is going. Uh, I, go ahead. I went in on Monday with mine because I had to go get a Nano SIM card uh, for my own account. And uh, oh god, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So rather than use the SIM card that Motorola sent, I'm using my own account on it. And uh, I went in, and it was like none of the reps realized that the Moto X wasn't out yet. But it's like, oh, you got a Moto X, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And and then one's like, yeah, mine's coming later this week. And then I'm like, it's probably. I wanted to say like it's not out yet. Like how are you not excited that I have it and it's not out? They're just like, oh, you have a Moto X. You know, I uh, though totally I, I have seen I have seen AT and T reps get stuff way early though. When the Lumia 1020 was rolling out, uh, a friend of mine is a manager at an AT and T store actually, and he's like posting. He was posting photos from a Lumia 1020 before I got my review unit. So nice. there, AT and T is doing some some seeding of devices uh, early to its to some of its stores. I think for some high profile stuff. So yeah. um, you know, and which is cool, which is long overdue. But uh, let's move on from, from Moto for a second. We'll have more to talk about on this next week, I'm sure. Because I need you guys to educate me on something. And this is an Anton news story, but uh, I think you guys probably know more about this device than I do because I know nothing about it. This, uh, this HTC Zara has been leaked. Uh, at least the render of it has been leaked with a... Uh -huh. um, <laughs> yeah, our friend got trolled a little bit yeah. by uh, EV leaks. Yeah. Did we talk about this on the last podcast? I think I thought we did, maybe. I don't know. What? I wasn't on the last podcast. I know you weren't, yeah. I wasn't on the last podcast. Yeah, I shouldn't be asking you guys. Anyway, whether we did or not, uh, this what is this HTC Zara? It looks to be a mid-range new, new Android device from HTC. Is that correct? It's the HTC phone no one asked for. Well, according, <laughs> according to, to Jeff or Urban Strata, uh, it's completely fake, and EV Leaks is way off his game. So that's <laughs> right. Well, and, he said that he doesn't like HTC doesn't comment on unofficial leaks and rumors, but he commented on in gadget. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we, so he so said that it's not real. I don't know what to make of it. So 
Yeah, I am also. See, the, the only reason this made it to this week, because we did touch on this last week, uh, the only reason we made it to this week is because this news story is from yesterday. So we have, God, I, I cannot remember exactly what sequence of events this occurred in, but the point is there are always new phones coming out from every brand. This might be one of them. It might not. Has it been thoroughly debunked or no? It's just, is it just uh, Jeff Gordon saying it's it's not legit? Or is it just the render he has an issue with and... Could the phone actually exist with these specs, but not as we're seeing it here? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. That I could, know. could well be. Um, it certainly, this. if you're not clicking on the link, listeners, it certainly falls in line with something we might expect from HTC to keep costs down. It is not an aluminum body. It looks like... Uh, it looks like uh, the same plastic used on the first. It actually looks like a stretched first with boom sound, doesn't it? Yeah. It, yeah. It, the back of it reminds me of the Thunderbolt. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's some kind of amalgamation of all three of these things. And uh, I, I just am captivated by it because I like seeing new devices that are not necessarily in the high end that have boom sound because uh, it's also, the best thing to come to mobile. Ever. I just went into convulsions because I said Thunderbolt. <laughs> Bad memories. But, oh, <laughs> but HTC also has boom sound on the higher end Desire models, I think, and that's what confused me about this guy because it seems it's just a little bit better than the Desire 600, but it's unclear where it fits in HTC's broader lineup. If this is a really good Desire phone or a really bad HTC One. Yeah, and I think it would be the former because I mean, there's nothing on this that says to me it's a premium thing. I think HTC is going to continue to build boom sound into lower and lower uh, tier models until they have their entire lineup offers boom sound because that seriously is like their compelling differentiator, right? Yeah, they wanted it to be uh, ultra pixel, but that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, uh, at the same well, time, it didn't, just it didn't, it didn't, over yeah, but at the same time, it didn't go down in flames either. I mean, the HTC no. One still takes better low light photos than, than, than some other phones out there. Noise don't aside, ask Brandon. yeah, don't ask Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and certainly, um, that's when I was doing the HTC One after the buzz last week, I, I made it a point to say, like, listen, the HTC One's camera isn't getting worse, it's just that every other camera has gotten so much better so quickly. Everyone yeah, well, seems to be throwing optical image stabilization in now, and uh, yeah, but, that's cool. Go ahead. But, but uh, HTC's like, you know, megapixels don't matter, and to an extent they don't, but then Nokia just two <laughs> months later is like, yeah, <laughs> but uh, they do. <laughs> yeah. Megapixels matter a lot. Here's a, a, lot, here's a lot of them. Yeah. 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 So, so that kind of blew up in their face. I don't, see, I don't think they saw that coming. Um, I think they probably no, saw they, it coming, well, but they, they tried to the change ass. the conversation before it arrived. And I think they're totally right. I mean, the megapixels don't matter if you if you do with them what HTC is doing. It's it's yeah different ways to approach the same problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, like like the Lumia 1020 does. It takes a 38 megapixel image or 34 megapixel image and squeezes it down to five. So it's only actually using but one more megapixel, I guess you could say, than the HTC One. So can I can I tell you guys what happened the other day? I was out for a walk and I saw a fire truck and I I kind of just wanted to play with the 1020 so i decided to take a shot like eight feet away from the fire truck of its control panel and you know that went well and all that stuff i was able to zoom in and made a pretty shot and shared it on twitter and blah, 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 blah. but the thing is a fireman came up to me while i was taking photos of the truck and he was asking me about the 1020 and i'm you know happy to tell him all about it i'm like blah blah blah. this is how it works here it is it's, how many megapixels and he's, i'm like 41 he's like wow and we start talking about that but i told him the resolution and from that point on the conversation could not get away from the resolution. Regardless of how I showed him how you can manually focus, change exposure times, do all the crazy stuff with the camera, the only thing this firefighter cared about after I told him the resolution was whether we were looking at the raw photo on the screen, whether we could edit the raw photo, do stuff with the raw 38 megapixel image and all that stuff. So it, it didn't matter what feature I showed him, he just wanted to see the raw stuff. And he wasn't a photographer, it was just this compelling, I, I think, kind of consumer urge to be like, so are we looking at the, the big photo now or are we looking at the five megapixel thing? Like, he seemed to completely dismiss the pixel sure. doubling and all that other kind of stuff. And I don't, I, I, I don't, I sort of get that, but Stephen, it sounds like you get it more than I do. I mean, look at like in movies when you have, you know, the image analysis doing enhance so we keep zooming in on the image. That's the cool part is being able to zoom in this fantastic amount. No one cares about, oh, I can make this exposure really nice looking. It's not impressive. <laughs> yeah, uh, you want to zoom I'm, in crazy far. I'm making a video and it, it'll go live 
some at some point. I don't know. I've been working on it for a long time. But uh, one of the, the parts that I'm doing is, is showing off the zoom on the, the camera or, or the, the post zoom. So you take a picture and then you then you, you zoom all the way in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, it, it even impresses me because it's just like, how is this possible? Even though I've done it a million times, I took a picture of some graffiti on a wall. And there, there are actually two of them. Uh, took some graffiti, or I took a picture of some graffiti maybe 40 or so feet away. And you can zoom in on this face in the graffiti all the way, fill the, the viewfinder on the phone, and it's still, you can just see the little individual bricks and everything. It's it's amazing. Yeah. So it, Does that concern anybody else? Because it's, it's actually been worrying me a little bit, and not enough to write a piece about it or anything, but just, mm-hmm. like, you can legit... And I, make no mistake, I am not advocating this. In fact, I'm condemning it. But you're a creeper. No, that's the thing. You can be a total creep. You like, can. I've I've taken. You know, you saw the pictures in the review of like I'll, I'll take photos of the beach and whatever like that. And like people 150 feet away, you can zoom in on and just creep them. And that's creepy as get out. So yeah. you know, this falls into the same category as you know satellite satellite photography and you know, I don't know. Even it, this has been a problem since telescopes were invented, right? Just just like creepers being out there. This is why out telescopes were invented. Let's make no mistake. There. <laughs> that's a good point. It ain't it ain't the planets. It's creepy. Yeah, uh, but don't I be mean, a creep. Is my point. I you know it, with we have to be restrained enough as technology continues to advance in this way to not be total jerks with it. And Man. what happens once we get this 41 megapixel sensor in something in like, like Google, Google Glass? Glass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. God. yeah. This Society's makes me think of uh, what happened about five minutes after I moved into my new apartment. Because I have, a, I have a pool view. Oh, you so got a pool I, view? Yes. Oh, I, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Everyone's seen your view, Taylor, yes, who lives in a beautiful place. <laughs> so I moved in. It was the middle of the day on a Sunday. And I believe it was uh, some holiday. I can't remember. There were a ton of people out at the pool. And I moved in. And the friend, my friend helping me move, he's like, hey, do you have any binoculars? It's like, uh, yeah, why? And I, I, was, I wasn't thinking. I'm like, yeah, they're right here. And I just handed them to him. And he's like, sweet. And he walked up to my window and started, like, creeping <laughs> on the people in the pool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, I'm like, dude, get out dude, of the window. Get out of the window. And I live here now. <laughs> Time for a new place. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. <laughs> don't, first of all, so two points. One, yeah, don't be a creep with the Lumia 1020 or any other device. You creepy, creepy people out there. Number two, Taylor Martin keeps a pair of binoculars around. I love it. What do what you bird watch? What do you, why do you have a pair of binoculars? That's I have hilarious. Binoculars. That's hilarious. What are you guys doing with binoculars? I don't know why I have them. I know somebody bought them for me a long time ago. And I've never actually used like, them. I'm not saying they're a bad thing to have, but it's not like we're on, like, a ship, you know? I mean, like, like my, my dad has binoculars, too, but, like, you know, he's a boating man. Well, so I, I have I, a full view. Yeah. What else oh, do you have a, well, there you go. Of course. <laughs> shall, we, uh, shall we move on, gentlemen? We have a, a very interesting piece of news that actually carries us across three platform categories. Isn't that fun? Yes, we do, and it's awesome. Isn't it great? Here's the thing. I didn't know about this until about 15 minutes before we started the podcast, but the YouTube app got an update. Hold on. I knew that. I knew the YouTube app for Android had gotten an update. I did not know that this app allowed you to do some crazy-ish, namely oh, yeah. popping out the video from its frame and letting yeah. you browse other videos while watching the existing YouTube video. Now, this is not surprising to people like us who've seen Samsung's you know, picture-in-picture stuff on, on the display. What do they call that? The, I, I like it. A uh, pop-up, pop-up video. view. Pop-up view. Not pop-up video. Pop-up that, that, video. Boot, doot, boot. That was an awesome show on VH1, Taylor well, Martin. You're right. But, pop-up, yeah, pop-up video, video was what it was called originally. No, it wasn't. No, yes, it, it, it was. It was never called that. Ah, yeah, it was. <laughs> I'm, I'm checking right now. We're going to fight about this right now. Pop-up you can do it. Video. I've called it that in every article I've ever written about it, so I hope it's right. I know uh, it's right because uh, it was pop-up browser. Ah, uh, crap. Pop- yeah. <laughs> How do I use pop-up video multitasking on my AT&T oh. Samsung from Samsung.com? All right, Taylor Martin, you win. You suck. And mysteriously, the podcast ends up edited before publication. <laughs> <laughs> I... Four I, I focus on branding. Two. Thank you very much. Listen, if I didn't if I didn't edit out all the creepy binocular stuff we just talked about, I'm definitely <laughs> not, not editing out that. So um, this I had is to cool. The story. We've seen this before. We've seen it on. Yes, you did. We've seen it uh, on Samsung devices. We've seen it on LG devices. Um, it, it's very cool to multitask on your mobile device sometimes. But, but the important part about this is it's baked right into the YouTube app, and you can do it on any phone, right? Any Android phone? Yeah, and the the. 
point I want to make is that it's so much more seamless. Like with Samsung, you can only do it with, with uh, videos that are stored locally. So you can't do this mm. with, with YouTube or anything like that. But this, it just happens. And, and I have a problem with that, and I also love it at the same time. Because you're in a video, you're watching it, and you back out. And you expect the video to just stop. But what it does is it just drops to the bottom of the screen, and it keeps playing while you keep browsing. Oh, so freaking it, cool. It does it automatically, and, and the first, like, four or five times, it freaked me out. And I'm like, what? I just backed out of this. And I was, like, thinking, oh, maybe it's on my Chromecast. No, it's on my phone. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh. So, you know, I, I kind of got weirded out a couple times, but now it's kind of cool because if you don't want it, you just slide it to the left, and it dismisses, sure. and it stops playing. And it's really neat. It, it just kind of fades the audio out. The video kind of fades away. I mean, they, yeah. they've polished it really, really well. Yeah, we still um, need a way for it to keep playing audio while your screen's powered off. Yeah, for that me, would that's be the really, next big step. Yeah, let me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, but just the, because that would be awesome. At the Let's, same time, and like I think a lot of people don't see the utility in that, but I, there are so many use cases, and mine is that uh, my favorite band has a lot of songs that people have kind of ripped, and yeah, this is illegal and stupid, but they've ripped and uploaded stuff to to YouTube. And you can't find those tracks anywhere else. They're not on Spotify. They're not on iTunes. Like, the only place you can do this is if you, like, have a vinyl and a, and a record player and stuff. And people have, uh, you know, defied uh, copy protection and ripped that vinyl stuff to MP3 and then uploaded it to a YouTube video with, like, a static image. And that's how I like listening to some of these tracks. Because I don't... Guys, I'm not going to buy a record player. I'm sorry. You know? Well, you have a record player. Well, I should have. Well, you know what? When I buy some binoculars, I'll get a I'll get a record player on my way back from that trip. Fair enough. Fair All enough. Right, good. So there's there's a lot of use cases for this, and it's cool to be able to play uh, YouTube when the screen is dark, and that would be nice to be able to do. But I think this existing update, you know, this playing the the video continuously as you scroll other videos or playing it as you do other stuff, this solves a big problem. That's that's uh, been present with all YouTube iterations on mobile in the past. I, I think this is going to be awesome for for the service, for users, for everyone. This is like the most significant YouTube update I've seen on mobile in a very long time. Oh, yeah. What did Taylor um, leave to go look up? Oh, I'm, I'm still here. I'm just looking to see if, if by chance they added a way to, uh, to play, play the screen off. Oh, yeah, because that would be great. They would be. I mean, I'm sure a third-party app will do it, but but I mean, for for stuff like a, the podcast, you upload the podcast to YouTube, and you don't want to sit here and burn your your display the whole entire time. Yeah. So you play it and and close out of it. But no, there's no option. That's right. Unfortunately, that would give it, that would also help. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to display guy? like how no, it's an ad. But if you back uh, out, it's all unlimited. If you, you back out. I want a limited. I want to go to Olive Garden so bad right now. Thanks a lot, jerk. You're welcome. Well, Here we looks go. Looks a little familiar, but it's also. Uh, guy sounds like a jerk. So, what? do you hear how it just kind of fades out the audio? It's really yeah. nice. Yeah, it just diminishes it. as you go. That's that's awesome. Hot sauce. So it's All not right. just kind of like, boom, cut off in the middle of a sentence, and it's 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 nice and polished and and it works well. So that's that. This is good stuff. Uh, does this upgrade also apply to iOS devices, because that's the next thing on our lineup, because that app was updated as well. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah. know my iPhone's at home. <laughs> yeah, uh, supposedly they got the same picture-in-picture uh, -picture feature. Yeah, I'm looking at the piece now. So yeah, it, it, overhauling the UI and introducing an in-app multitasking, keeping videos playing while you navigate away from them. Uh, it was all very cool stuff for Android users, and just like with the Android release, that picture-in-picture -picture video playback business is in place. That's awesome. Swipe to activate, swipe to dismiss. And uh, you can search for and play YouTube playlists as well, and that's really, really, really awesome. And Steven uh, does a nice, nice job of kind of predicting my segue in his piece from yesterday because that's all well and good for Android and iOS users, and congratulations, everyone. Meanwhile, <laughs> over in Windows Phone land with those of us carrying the Lumia 1020. What's YouTube? Uh, yeah. <laughs> or any other Windows phone. There has been a ton of drama, hasn't there? Oh, yeah. Boy, howdy. Uh oh, the mm. iOS app got a nice uh, icon update, too. Mmm, great. <laughs> so, but, <you> yeah. Know, <laughs> Windows phone people don't know anything about that. Right. So, the short story, that, and, and there, there almost isn't a short story on this, but the short story is that... Um, 
what Microsoft and Google have been fighting about this for some time. Microsoft several months ago released a YouTube app for Windows Phone 8 that was guys go with me on this. Probably the most amazing YouTube app we'd ever seen, right? Not only did it give you the ability to do a whole bunch of fun regular YouTube stuff, but you could like it would block ads and you could download YouTube videos. Yeah. It, yeah. it basically was too awesome ever to exist, and it flew right in the face of everything Google's trying to do with YouTube. <laughs> so to no one's great surprise, Google broke it, and then yeah. they well, fought. Well, did they break the first one, or did they just yell at Microsoft sufficiently loud enough to scare them to... That might have been it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they went out of the way to. But yeah, whatever the case, it was soon they, taken down. They backhanded them and said, "Do it now. Take right. it down." Right. And then Microsoft, after some like a day's worth of silence, during which I'm sure many phone calls took place, Microsoft and Google then came out to announce, or Microsoft announced that it will be working with Google to build to you know to bring it out to bring a, a different version of the app out and i think either it was mentioned or we all speculated that that would incl- that would just be the same version of the app without video downloading and with the ads served intact right that was the most obvious way to do it sure yeah and so when microsoft re-released their uh youtube app several days ago everyone was very excited because oh this experience was great uh, we're, we're going to lose a couple of those awesome features but thank goodness we don't just have to deal with a crappy redirect to the mobile youtube site as we've been doing on windows phone for years and within what i don't know four hours or something like that um google had broken the back intentionally broken the back end to disable this new application uh, and this has resulted in just a an exchange of fire between the two companies that, it, were it not so annoying, would be quite hilarious. Because Microsoft wrote this two-page letter talking about how all it wants to do is give its users a good experience, and then Google's re- response to that is kind of an unofficial, yeah, then stop teasing them, because apparently, Stephen, what happened? Microsoft released this app without consulting Google first, is that correct? I... It's not entirely clear what or how much input Google had in this whole process. I have a feeling they gave Microsoft this you know, list of bullet points. It has to do this. It can't do this. And the real the sticking point for Microsoft was this HTML5, that you're, this is ridiculous to build an app this way. It would, you know, it's going to hurt performance. It's not going to give our users the experience they're looking for. And no one else has to do this either. So yeah. I feel like Microsoft decided we're just going to ignore that one and hope that Google wouldn't raise as big a stake as they had over. Because like you said, they took away what was, we all presumed to be the bad stuff, the downloading, the uh, the no ads. And I guess it was a much bigger deal for Google than Microsoft gave them credit for. Yeah. yeah. It, it was kind of ridiculous. And uh, did you actually use the app, Michael, the, the new YouTube app that was pulled? I tried to, and I fired it up on the air on the podcast, I think, and it uh, gave it gave me the error message because Google had already broken it by the time I I, I had fired it up. Well, they also the, broke the error uh, message. By the way, it was an award winning error message. Something happened. We don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they also broke it in the browser. You couldn't go to mobile YouTube from a Windows Phone. Are oh, you serious? Right. Yeah, oh, uh, that, that was what Tony was telling me. Playing but, real uh, dirty. Yeah, that's. Oh neat. yeah, it was. It was it was a pretty low blow, but uh, the the YouTube app, the official one that that they released last week, um, I downloaded it the night it was released, and it worked okay. But you could tell that it wasn't a native app. You could tell it was a HTML5, and it took time to load no, but, just a drop down menu. So it stuff. wasn't it wasn't HTML5. It wasn't was that the whole reason. No, that's that they... the whole thing. Yeah, because yeah. so oh. that, that's part of the thing. So you can look at this thing and be like, you can take whatever side you want, but there is plenty of guilt to go around. I love watching the comments because you know. Whether you're a Microsoft fanboy, an Android fanboy, or whatever, like, everyone tries to pin it on the other guy. But really, what it looks like, and The Verge did some really great reporting on this, by the way, if, if, um, if these sources are accurate. Um, you know, it, Microsoft did break the rules by, um, by kind of aggravating Google intentionally, by maybe rolling this thing out without consulting them, and by, um, by kind of using a couple shortcuts. But also, Google apparently insisted that Microsoft build this thing in HTML5. And while it has not implemented the same requirement for its Android and iOS apps. And that's that guys, does that hold true even for the new ones? The newly updated YouTube apps? They're still not HTML5, know, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. so basically Google is saying, okay, we don't have to build our own HTML5 app. And you know what? Apple doesn't either. But Microsoft, if you want this, then you have to build it in HTML5. And apparently there are some major engineering challenges to doing that 
with an app like the YouTube app on Windows Phone. So yeah. um, basically, the, it, the quote is, the roadblocks Google has set up are impossible to overcome, and they know it, is a quote from, uh, from a Microsoft source. So Moral of the story. Yeah. Moral, moral of, the story, of the story. If you everybody. want YouTube on Windows Phone, just use MetroTube. Pay the dollar thirty, whatever it is, and use MetroTube. It's better than all the official YouTube apps have been, actually, anyway, with yeah. the exception of being able to download and no ads. But uh, actually, I don't think there are ads in MetroTube. But either way, it doesn't matter. It's uh, paid. It's uh, really cheap, and it looks really great. It actually works really well. I, I will second that. MetroTube is a really solid third-party app, and it has been for a very long time. Yeah. So, yeah, snap that up if you're if you're into that. And um, um, other moral we... of the story, uh, it, what are you talking about? Moving on. Uh, well, yes, I was going. Okay. To well, yeah. Before we do other other moral of the story, uh, read uh, read Adam Dowd's uh, very very quick piece. I didn't know it was a TLDR until I opened it up, but um, so I expected this in-depth thing, and it's basically Adam Dowd like, here's 200 words. I'm a dad, and you guys should grow up. Microsoft and Google, <laughs> get along or get out. And it's great. So read that for, for some fun. And then continue reading for 170 comments uh, of finger pointing. So, yes. <laughs> go go um, ahead, Taylor. What was that segue that you were going to try and do? Yeah, well, you killed it. Yay. Yay. That was my own medicine. Um, I was going to bring it back to Android or Google Android just for a, a hot second because oh, Google yeah, yeah. kind this of... This is an award-winning screw-up of a segue. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'm good at these. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, Google announced uh, Help Outs today. So we've been hearing a little bit about what Help Outs was. What and basically... About? What is this? What, what? What, are, what are these things? What are Help Outs? Help Outs are Hangouts that you... They're like, I guess, subscription-based or you have to pay for. They're paid Hangouts that you actually get on air with someone who is a quote unquote expert or you know a professional in an, um, a field or or just knowledgeable and you pay for uh, physical one on one help using hangouts basically oh, good how much will it cost for them to tell me how to remove hangouts from android 4.3 <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't know how yeah. much it will cost they haven't released pricing i think it's a pretty good idea because it i mean i just signed up for an invitation and um it said, would you like to help or, or join help outs, meaning would I like to give advice to someone else? And I don't know if that means they would pay me. Probably not. But uh, Yeah, what's the story? Well, but Google is I don't know. like it's a pioneer really... in the whole profit sharing thing. I mean, it's very possible that you could get a cut of it because that's what they do with the YouTube partner program. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it, it very well could be that. I don't know. There is one sentence of information on the, the site, and it says, help outs is a new way to connect people who need help with people who can give help over live video anytime, anywhere. That's all it says. Real help from real people in real time. And like what the teaser images of you, like of the, you have a user holding up an Nexus 4 uh, and with his other hand fixing a bicycle. And then on the screen of his Nexus 4, there's a dude oh, showing him how to fix his bicycle. Sorry to interrupt here. I found some I think terms that's... of service stuff oh, you did. about payment. Uh, providers can offer help outs for free, or they can have the option to charge. And if they charge, uh, Google takes 20% cut. Oh, oh, that's awesome. I would most definitely do this. Yeah, this is a really, really smart idea. This is like a paid you review, except for stuff that like goes beyond phones. Um, I would do this for rooting and other stuff. Dude, totally, yes. Because that's exactly the situation you want something like this in. You're like, yeah. wow, I just got, it just threw me this ridiculous error code. I don't know what this means. Yeah. Yep, I would do this all day. Uh, I'd make money. Wow, cool. Yeah, man, this was worth Sorry, the... Pocket, now I found a new job. <laughs> it was a good run. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we, all, we all said we were tired of it. Yeah, this so. is going to be the new work-from-home thing. Who needs that mechanical yeah. Turk where you're getting, you know, five cents an hour? This could be really what profitable. I, yeah. What I want to know is how could you do this and, uh, I guess, like, how do you connect to people? Do they find you on Google Plus and... So, like, is this tied to Google Plus? I imagine it would be. Probably, yeah, because everything is. Because how else are they going to connect Google to you? Google Plus account is required to use Help Outs. Of course it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google Plus account is going to be required to do it. everything. So me working on getting more followers on Google Plus has been a, uh, hasn't been in vain. We'll yeah. say that. 
Mm. And and me <laughs> totally ignoring Google Plus to the detriment of everyone who follows me. Sorry. I posted uh, on Google Plus know. last week. I said, is Michael Fisher actually going to start using Google Plus? And there was a lot of response. Everyone was like, <laughs> yes. And then Michael doesn't use Google Plus. <laughs> oh. I, I just, you know, what we're, we're not going to get into this. We're not going to we're not going to talk about this. But Until, you could do you know, help outs and make money. You know, using when I'll Google start using, you know, what I'll, you know, when I'll start doing using Google Plus. When there's mm-hmm. an awesome native Windows Phone app for Google Plus, how's that? Uh, stop using Windows Phone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Speaking of Windows Phone, uh, the HTC One hardware has, a, it, according to one particular leak, uh, or maybe this wasn't a leak. Maybe Stephen Chen can tell us about it from August nineteenth. Uh, the HTC One hardware may be just co-opted as it is for an HTC Windows Phone, <laughs> assuming those rumors we heard about HTC not doing Windows Phone anymore are not true. Steven, can you tell us a little bit about this story? Yeah, this new uh, new report on it isn't that much new. We heard this rumor, I think, last month or something, that later in the year, HTC would release a phone that's largely the one but running Windows Phone. And at the time, we were still hearing about the, the Mini and the Macs. I think there were just still rumors back then. So this idea of HTC One looking hardware running the gamut of sizes was was still very much on our minds. And so we didn't know if this would be exactly the one or kind of leaning towards the mini, kind of towards the max, whatever. This new rumor is just some very specific uh, hardware details that pretty much mirror the Android running one exactly. Wow. But I, I don't know if we should put much faith in them or if it's just someone assuming that they're just going to do another one. So... Uh, if this is the case, and with the latest version of Windows Phone, it would ideally have support for the new Snapdragon chipsets, correct? Yeah, assuming mm-hmm. this would um, run GDR3, quad-core support, 1080p, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So, assuming that's the case, what would stop anyone from making a Windows Phone with the option for Android? We've talked about this before. It's possible to run the same two on hardware, but the problem, or the two on the same hardware, but the problem is that running Android on Windows Phone compatible hardware right now leaves you with a an Android device that wouldn't run so well. It would more, it would be okay, I suppose, but not great. Yeah, but it's so, never been like you couldn't do it. I feel like this, yeah. even though it's better hardware, it's not going to suddenly motivate someone who's passed on it for the past two years now how about this better better analogy i guess would this be the 2013 uh hd2 oh yeah see that's what i'm getting to actually the hd2 was the hd2 was amazing because it ran pretty much everything ever yeah so this could be maybe this could be htc's kind of uh saving grace maybe I don't know, because Qualcomm's been getting all this heat lately with its you know, AOSP bullcrap with having problems releasing the factory image. Maybe Qualcomm isn't the, uh, the chips that we want to look to for the next big, open, flexible phone. But uh, if you had a phone, and from the factory, it could run stock Android, Sense, or Windows Phone, that would be a huge selling point for a lot that of tech That would be awesome. Yeah, it would, would be amazing, and it's doable. And we've learned, uh, not that this is a new lesson, but we have learned that, uh, you know, if you can get the tech blogosphere excited about something, that tends to translate to, to real-world sales, <laughs> you know? I mean, I think the HTC One was probably the most celebrated phone, uh, well, since I, since I started doing this, right? Yeah, the yeah. sales aren't great, Greg. They're not great, but yeah. they're better than they would have been had yeah. it not gotten yeah. the, the amazing amount of press it did. And the press was, was well-deserved. It was probably better than, like, the Thunderbolt, the uh, Inspire, and that generation of HTC phones all combined. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, yeah, go ahead. No, uh, you know, I was, I was leaning down to plug something in, so that would have been a, a nice time for you to actually interrupt. <laughs> oh. But uh, oh. now that uh, that moment has passed, I'm going to interrupt uh, you. Well, I'm going to talk right over you. Podcast <laughs> of the worst segues ever. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we do. Uh, so this is the, th- the thing. Um, I have a different view on this. And first of all, that HD2 is a nice call out, Taylor, because I think our own Anton Dinoj is working on a Pocket Now throwback review of that device <laughs> as we speak. 
he called me on Monday and he's like, I put my SIM in the HD2 and it lasted for about 30 minutes and then I freaked out and put yeah. it back in another phone. <laughs> he got so <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> so if he's not broken it, then we should expect a pocket now throwback yeah. uh, today uh, on that thing. I, yeah. Another question, and this is kind of rhetorical, but Taylor since just HTC, wants me to pee in my pants. Go ahead. I do. Well, I, this is a, an interesting topic because it's kind of that, that perfect device that I've thought about for a long time because this could be maybe not dual booted. Maybe it could be dual booted, but um, a phone that I could use back and forth. It, it's that kind of medium that I've wanted between Windows Phone and, and Android. <laughs> kind of like I had a Windows machine and I ran Linux most of the time, but I booted Windows when I needed it. Right. So this could be that. Right. But um, mm. the point I'm trying to make or, or the question I want to pose is uh, HTC has allowed support for people who had the, uh, the the developer edition HTC One and the international HTC One and the stock HTC Ones on the carriers. Ha- they've allowed that to actually be updated to Google Play software. Well, not the official ones, I guess. Not officially official AT and T, T Mobile, HTC Ones being run or being updated. You can't convert it officially. But do you think that they would offer, say, if an HTC One owner on, I don't know, AT&T, or even a developer edition, do you think they would offer a way to flash Windows Phone to it? That was a really weirdly worded question. <laughs> you, but. You, just, you just asked a question like I ask questions in interviews. <laughs> like I, <laughs> yeah. I hit people with a wall of text four minutes long, and then I, I expect them to answer, and they look at me like I'm an idiot. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Okay, let me rephrase that a little so shorter. So do you, do you think HTC would allow people to fl- – would, would give people the support needed to flash Windows Phone if they wanted to on, on this hypothetical device? Is yeah, that the question? on like the developer edition. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. No, because I, if it's on the developer edition, if, then people are eventually going to port it to I think Stephen and devices. I have different, different answers. I think yes, uh, assuming no legalese gets in their way. I think that they – HTC is cognizant of the fact that they need to do a lot of things to differentiate and they need to do it visibly and they're, you know, they're not in great shape as a company. So I think they would do anything necessary to capture the nerd um the nerd aspect of this. What about you, Stephen? I understand why they should do it. I'm hesitant to believe they would because I'm just remembering one incident. I forget exactly what phone it was, but I think it's one HTC was planning to upgrade to the next the latest and greatest Android flavor. They said they were going to, and they backed down. And their explanation was really weird. It had to do with how much flash was available on the phone and trying to fit everything and sense on there. And in the end, you could make it work, but the reasoning for why they weren't releasing an update was that you would have to you know, repartition the flash storage. And they seemed to get really apprehensive about getting users involved with anything where you're doing really low-level flash stuff. And I kind of feel that Installing a second OS would be a lot along the same lines there. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a fair point. point. Yeah, that's a fair point. But we're talking about the developer edition. Yeah, and this is also... the first phone with a developer edition. Right. Well, my my question. Is, so we don't know if they would allow this or or not. Or you know, it, it's it's unclear. And by the way, we're completely in speculation territory right now. Oh, yeah. We have no indication that anything like this is happening. We don't even know if, and aliens. Yeah. And Area 51 we don't even stuff. know if the phone we're talking about is real. I, you know, so. Here's the thing, though, and I will say this, and this will be my last point on on this topic. Um, dual booting is very attractive to me on the uh, on the handset front. All this talk about dual booting Android and Windows Phone, I mean, that would be kind of the perfect device, especially in a body like the HTC One's, um, maybe with the Lumia 1020's camera tacked on, but that's a whole other ball of wax. But the, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. But the thing is, um, it, dual booting itself is not inherently attractive because of the limitation that you have to boot, you have to reboot every time you want to hop into a different thing. I think much cooler would be, and I think I've written about this actually, much cooler would be the ability to hop between the two platforms without oh, rebooting, like, like you can do Samsung. on the Ativ Q. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, the Ativ Q is a little different, no, though. That's a completely different emulates. hardware architecture, and it emulates... What does it emulate? Does it emulate Android within Windows 8? Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah. yeah. So it's an emulator or, or a virtualization you know of Android. It's not yeah, I running it was, I thought it was Android, hardware virtualization. virtualization. Yeah. It might be, but, but either way... I could live with that, though. The, the ability to do that on a phone, you're going to destroy your battery. Sure, and, and I get that. And, and, you know, you might have to carry a Franken phone. You might have to carry a... Uh, something akin to a Droid Ultra Max, 
you know, with with a massive battery, would and it would still that. not last all day. But it, wouldn't that be great if you could just hop oh, yeah. back and forth between it? I don't care if it's virtualized as long as it's done properly, and I can have a, my whole suite of Android apps if I need them. But the Windows 8 UI, which I prefer, you know, all I think I that would be amazing. Of, yeah. All I think of right, all I keep thinking of right now is uh, Edge, the Edge. Um, and the and running or or you oh, Ubuntu touch Edge. Oh, Ubuntu God. touch so that being able die? to uh, too soon yeah I'm sorry the, the ability to run full Linux and Android side by side we'll they, they share the second. kernel well they share the kernel but this is the problem uh, Windows Phone and Android do not share the same kernel so you're you, you know they're not even the same uh, core OS or right. the same language or anything so it, it's it's a little bit of a different story than that but I think with uh, some some mastermind developers, it could happen. Haven't we done like this on the HD2 already? I'm pretty sure know. someone's come up with dual boot situations there. I, I mean, course, I, th- we are, I think so. If we are I talking just... about uh, doing all that stuff on a phone like the One, I think that expandable storage would definitely be something the HTC would want to add. Because yeah. when you have all your stuff, I mean, a lot of media is not going to be compatible between... Uh, Windows Phone and Android, anything with DRM tied to their respective stores, you're going to need yeah. separate space for all. Of course, granted, you're probably not going to have copies of the same thing on both, so I, I take that point back. Yeah, they, they would share a file system, obviously, but because, you know, they both can run off FAT32 or, or whatever. Well, uh, Android doesn't have. do. Well, not, no, not we're, we're getting super technical. We have we to are. get guys from <laughs> XDA forums over here. I guess yeah. we were mentioning Edge a second ago. I'm pulling this up now. This is ridiculous. 16 hours to go, and only they only need 20 million dollars more, guys. So if we could all just buy, yeah, I'll just, just buy do it. I'll seven do it or eight phones each, or pledge a couple of those eighty thousand uh, dollar enterprise bundles. I mean, that's I think just I've a got good that much investment. Credit card. I, I, I've got that. <laughs> well, 20 million. Pfft. I mean, I work for the internet. So I'm I'm rich as as all get out. That's right. We all are. Hey, can we uh, t- can we move on to another bad idea? No, Asphalt Eight comes out tomorrow. Ooh, that's a car racing game, right? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Are you excited yeah. about it? No. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, well, <laughs> no, because my shield is gone now. <laughs> you don't have the shield anymore. You had to send the it back. Shield go. Uh, Brandon, he's like, send it to me. Uh, so, oh. Did you review it already? No. Uh, that's a. Tricky oh. story. Oh. <laughs> I don't. I don't oh. know the the technical details, but uh, I don't think Brandon was happy about that. Ooh. It wasn't my decision. Oh so. boy! All right. Okay. Somebody but pulled the plug on it. Wow. Okay. Um. Jeez, <laughs> I didn't know about that. All right. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Nvidia Shield probably more coverage coming from Brandon Miniman. <laughs> or no <laughs> coverage ever. Or maybe. Or maybe or we more unboxings. Known. Or more unboxings of kid toys. So. Uh. Or diapers or something. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Should we tell our listeners about that? Yeah, if you haven't watched the unboxing of whatever little infant iPhone case toy thing uh, it was that Brandon unboxed, it was really cool and funny. Wow. Okay, so... He he also proposed an idea to me, but I can't talk about it, but it would be absolutely hilarious, and I am fully, totally on board with it for an unboxing in the future. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's (laughs) going to be cool. Let's not not tease anyone further. Let's talk about a bad idea that maybe isn't a bad idea, but it maybe is. We just did a Surface RT after the buzz, and I posted that thing at like 10 in the frickin' p.m., so thank you, everyone, for watching it so late at night on the East Coast here. And uh, even later elsewhere. So um, that we, we in in that video, I talk a little bit about the limitations of Windows RT, and um, there are very few people around, I think, who would defend RT, right, uh, as a as a usable OS for um, for advanced stuff. It, it, well, it kind of gets the basics okay. Yeah, it, it's like. Windows Lite is what it is. Yeah. But but when Samsung comes out with you know the Ative. Q and what is the new tablet? Uh, the tab, Windows tab. I don't know what it is. It's I don't remember an, the name. It's an Ative yeah. something, right? Yeah, Ative something. The Windows tab that they announced at their event a few months back. Um, it runs Windows 8, uh, Windows Pro. It runs the full yeah. edition of Windows 8 in a, a tablet body the size of an Android tablet. So the same thickness, same oh, yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. No, no, they've been doing that for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well... When you have something like that, Windows RT really just doesn't make sense because yeah. it, it's 
the price point, yes, it's fine, but at that price point and with that kind of a functionality, I would rather just have an Android or uh, iOS yeah. tablet. So you start wading into subjective waters there and stuff, and I think my everyone subjectivity has a, is at, my profession. <laughs> Mine too. Uh. Everyone has a different kind of view on what's wrong with RT with 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 uh, Windows RT. For me, it's the fact that that. Um, that that faux desktop is there, and it needs to be to fill some of the functionality gaps that aren't there in the modern UI. But as a result, it's a tease because it it purports to give you more functionality than actually exists. That's my problem with Windows RT. But whatever your individual problem with RT is, these rumors about a Nokia-sourced Windows RT tablet, I mean, they're not really going away, right? Or, or, or have they all been debunked just when I wasn't paying attention? Well, Elop... Didn't he say a few months back that uh, Nokia is not going to make a tablet? Yeah, but th- that was a few months back. I mean, yeah, that's. The I mean, thing. things like, can change, and it could have been him just saying, "Oh, yeah, we're not making a tablet to surprise us later." Right. Uh, we've been seeing all these fablety looking Nokia things. Maybe they're just naturally. You know, Windows Phone does everything. It seems you know a couple years delayed from the rest of the the industry. Maybe they're just now feeling this push into larger and larger sizes. Right. And my my question is this, like the conventional wisdom, <laughs> wisdom, quote unquote, is that uh, making a Windows RT tablet, anyone making a Windows RT tablet is a bad idea. And actually, Adam Dowd mm-hmm. write, writes an editorial exactly to that effect uh, that went up yesterday. And uh, it's a good piece. And, and he goes more in depth than we will here. But my counter argument would be because my principal problem is that faux desktop. What if after... Now Windows 8.1, when that drops, uh, I'm, I'm blanking. Is there going to be there's that that's going to apply to RT as well? Yeah, of course it is because the service yeah. is going to be updated. So that's going to address a lot of the gaps in functionality that are presently there. So what if it addressed enough to completely eliminate that faux desktop environment and just present the idealized modern UI experience? I think that would be even better than Windows it, 8, full Windows 8, right? Would it be? In, well, in, in some respects, on a simpler device, on a device that you're not going to use to do, like, crazy stuff in, in Windows proper. Because it would I, be like big Windows phone, right? I mean, like, and I like Windows phone. Yeah, but the problem with RT has been the app situation. And well, the yeah. reason that, and the reason that you don't like that phone desktop is because it's reminding you of the, <laughs> the bad app situation. Simply not being reminded of it anymore isn't going to make it go away. Right, it's true, but it, uh, but also another problem with RT is that it it was positioned as at, at first uh, as like as like a computer exactly yeah. right. So what if this tablet, what if this fake tablet that we don't know if it exists, is positioned instead as okay? No, it doesn't have a desktop. No, it doesn't have a huge app environment. But but it it'll do the things that it that it can do well, and only those things. So it's a limited experience, but it's a good one. It, it presents you an experience on its own terms. Um, I don't know if it would sell a lot, but I think it would be a better value proposition than what RT is currently putting out there, particularly if it was made of sweet polycarbonate. I don't know. I mean, yeah. so sort, of like, base. sort of like the Kindle Fire HD. It's giving you an Amazonized tablet experience, and you can you know expand on that, hack it to run normal stuff, but when you buy into that, you're buying into the whole, this is the... This is the tablet world that we're giving you. Take it or leave it. And but will it have peer view? <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, right. Um, I have a problem with Windows RT, and uh, that's its name because every time I read it, I read Windows retweet every <laughs> single time. That's, every single time. That has Windows never retweet. happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> every time I see capital RT, I think retweet. It's hardwired into my brain because I'm on Twitter so much. That's why it Even doesn't happen though- to you, Stephen. What does RT stand for? Retweet. No, but is there an official... <laughs> like, NT didn't stand for anything, right? New tweet. At least that was the company no, just line. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Windows RT. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I actually... I also do not know. Uh, I'm actually just kind of scouring the Wikipedia article right now because I, I feel like I was asking myself this. Yeah, Microsoft did not explicitly indicate what the RT in the operating system's name referred to, but it was believed to refer to the WinRT architecture. Mm. And who knows what that's in. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal actually has a piece from 10 July. Uh, what does the RT in Windows RT stand for? Is the headline. Rickety tablet. <laughs> <laughs> Zam. Short answer, nothing officially. Longer answer, something kind of. So we're not off base. It doesn't really mean anything. Uh, 
Yeah. Really, really terse. I have no idea. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I have a question, and I, I tried to research this very, very um, quickly, but I didn't. I, I didn't succeed. Is there any possibility? I know there's architecture questions involved, but is there any possibility of emulating Windows Phone apps within Windows RT? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was a great sound you made, Steve. Uh, I don't That's... know. I mean, it, it, they're built on the same core, correct? I mean, it should just happen, and it should be available. I don't know why it wouldn't be. I want, I want all the listeners right now who are face palming at the three of us trying to figure out Windows architecture questions to know that every time I see Adam Lane in person, I'm like, you got to come on the podcast, bro. And he's the one person who can answer these questions very, very well for us. Adam Dowd could do it, too, uh, to a degree. But Adam Lane, like, knows this stuff front and back. So if you talk to Adam Lane on Twitter, uh, at Adam ZEA, let him know you'd, you'd like to hear him on the podcast. Because we'd like to have him on for a Windows Phone, Windows RT, Windows 8 discussion session. If you know if there's been any recorded instance of Windows Phone 8 apps being emulated within Windows RT, shoot us an email. Podcast at pocketnow.com. Sounds like I'm doing the outro, but I'm not. You guys want to move on? <laughs> Let's. Let's please, please move on. We're, we're out of our depth. Um, the Sprint, is it botching the Ativas Neo launch, Stephen? Uh, probably. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, we, we were just. So if you guys don't know about this, this is, I guess it launched last Friday yeah. uh, in the U.S. And so Sprint put out this release saying, oh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, it was two days before the phone actually had its retail launch. So Wednesday, they say, yeah, come Friday, you can order the phone you know, online, in stores, over the phone. Yeah, everyone can get it. Except the in-store part was just actually ordering the phone. It didn't actually have it. So we're complaining about Moto X. You know, you can't... Uh, it, getting it in four days was ideal. People didn't want to wait too long. That's exactly what Sprint's making people interested in the A of S do. All both of them are going to have to wait for the package <laughs> to arrive. Yeah, I was in a Sprint store the other day on Sunday. I was like, I wonder if they've got it. I wonder if they are, in fact, uh, not doing this launch full, full heartedly. I walked into the Sprint store. I asked about the ATVS Neo, and the sales rep was very nice. And she was like, no, uh, that's been delayed. Uh, it's been pushed. We should get them next week. Well, that's heartening. I was worried this was going to be an ongoing, you know, never going to have a store presence. So yeah. they probably should have waited a week or two if that's the case. But it's yeah. not like this phone had a huge chance at success to begin with. Right. And, you know, this is, we, we got one yesterday. Yeah, I'm going to I unboxed it, and it's, it's on. It's, it's up. The unboxing video is up. What are you going to say, Taylor? Um, I will forever refer to this phone as the Ativ S Keanu, but that's just me. <laughs> oh, hi, God, you made a matrix. Oh, that's there. nice. So good old Pinocchio on the, the post. Wait, about the, wow. What about the HTC Keanu? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm waiting for it to happen. It, um, uh, it's not there. No. It, uh, it didn't happen. No, what, what he's the one. About? Oh, the yeah, one. Was the one. <laughs> what? We keep getting smarter with our jokes. Too, too close to the I mean, I, 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 I couldn't force out a laugh. I was kind of there, too. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Good old Pinocchio on the, the availability post uh, commented, Anticipation? What anticipation? Don't get a phone not even the OEM cares about. If you're going to go Windows phone, go Lumia, or don't waste your time. <laughs> it's a shame because the, the Samsung has pretty great hardware. It's one of the higher end of all the, the Windows Phone 8 models out there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and the next comment from Kevin Miller says, "This is Sammy putting the minimum effort possible to keep licensing rights they were promised by Microsoft if they put out Windows Phone. Same thing for HTC. On, the only company putting out supporting good Windows Phone devices is Nokia. I had an 8x, uh, I had an 8x, and it was crap, no support. It was falling apart after six months. Uh, yada yada yada. But yeah, it, so it seems to be even <laughs> even people who just read about this kind of get the same." Uh, I guess, feeling about how Samsung is approaching Windows Phone. Yeah, and, you know, th so there's plenty of blame to go around on the OEM side, but I am more, I wouldn't say surprised. I was about to say surprised, but that would be a lie. I am more disheartened at Sprint uh, for this, because Sprint uh, is a carrier that has not seen an actual Windows Phone device hit its network in, like, two years. And it was the HTC Arrive. They got one of the Windows Phone 7 initial, you know, devices, and that was the Arrive and whatever. Since then, they've just sat on that phone. People who have the Arrive and want to upgrade have had no Windows Phone to choose from. And they get the 8XT, which we just reviewed recently, 
and its software is not up to the task, and it's not really pushed hard on their website. And then they botch this rollout of the Ativ S Neo, and it just it reminds me of um, how Verizon treated WebOS and AT and T actually as well. Uh, it, it reminds me of of kind of being a part of, of of a smaller community that you're you you can't wait for the carrier to roll it out. You're very excited for the stuff to be on store shelves. Then it hits the shelves, and it's like. On the retail side, on the website, on the marketing side, it's just not supported. It just seems to be there with no cheerleader internally, and it's just, well, here it is on the sales floor. Uh, congratulations, you know, this is what we did for you, manufacturer. You know, it's 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 available if people want it, but we're not going to push it. I don't get that. I, I, I don't understand, especially when you've not had a Windows phone on your network for a long time, how you kind of just, like, leave it out there to mm, fend for itself, basically. You to know? stagnate. Yeah, I can see where Sprint comes from, though, because you know they don't want to go to a lot of effort to support a phone that they don't think is going to be successful. But at the same time, they're in the sales business. It's kind of, they're you know part of the reason that there isn't as much enthusiasm as there is because they haven't been selling these Windows Phone handsets for you know a year or two now. Mm -hmm. So maybe it, they're a little to blame, and that we should be expecting more from them. That's a good point. And you know what? To, to your point, there's very little to get excited about here. I mean, the 8XT had its failings, as we saw in the review. It had its good stuff, too, but it really overall is not terribly impressive. And the Ativ S Neo, though it has better specs um, and, well, better specs pretty much all around, is, is basically an Ativ S, which we saw back in November. So why are we, you know, why, why would we get, why would we get excited about it? So there's that flip side of the thing as well. I mean, it's a, it's it's a shame. It would be nice to see Sprint pick up a uh, a Nokia Windows phone so its customers have have the choice of that those advantages that Nokia offers. But but God, we'll looking at how they actually did it now, would it have been better if they just steered clear of Windows Phone 8 altogether than this, you know, probably late effort so we were looking at the next iteration of hardware right over the horizon i mean no, what's the point it doesn't it, you know, they it, pleasing? it doesn't hurt them to offer this i think who they're pleasing is those customers i mentioned before who have been stuck on the htc arrive for two years they don't want to leave sprint because either it works for them where they live or their plans are very competitive and they still are uh or for whatever reason they don't want to leave sprint but they also don't want to leave windows phone like, I, I totally get that. And like That's I say... It's a tough you know, boat to be in. It, it is. And it was a tough one to be in for all the, the Palm Pre customers as well, as watching Verizon get the Pre 2, watching AT&T get the Veer, and just Sprint sat there kind of saying, yeah, we're not really going to pick up any WebOS devices. You know, so it's, it's, it's a frustrating thing, and I'm glad for the Windows Phone devotees on Sprint that they actually are getting some devices. And we'll have more thoughts on the Ativas Neo uh, going forward. But that, I think, wraps up our usual news rundown or our conventional news rundown. And uh, it's time for us this week, since we skipped it last week, to do some remedial listener mail. Bong, bong. Sorry, I've been clearing my throat for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I should have been doing, man, because I'm getting, my voice is going away. I don't get it. Just shove a roto rooter down there, let it do its work. <laughs> 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 oh, gross. So, uh, why don't we alternate, guys, just so we can all preserve our voices. I will go ahead and go first. Our first piece of listener mail this week comes from Min Nguyen uh, to, uh, to us at podcastapocketnow.com. Can you share your experience, asks Min, buying any Windows phone in an AT&T store? I was trying to see if anyone has the same experience as I do. When I come and buy the phone, none of the employees know anything about the phone in this case, a Lumia 920. And the day I go to buy it is the first day Lumia is, is being released. There's no line. I'm the first one there, and they use a BS excuse that they are run out of Lumia 920 stock. Thanks for your time, and I love what you guys are doing. Man, thank you for writing in. Um, we have talked about this on the, sh on the podcast before. We've talked about this in, in pieces. Um, I think there's the often cited story of uh, Taylor Martin trying to buy a Lumia 900, was it? Uh, yes. On well, if you're day? talking about launch date, yeah. Yeah, uh, which was, uh, was that the Easter Sunday launch? Yes, it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to launch this phone on Easter Sunday, and all of our stores are going to be closed. Yeah. I don't know why Good I idea, remember guys. that. Yeah. And then the Lumia 920 launch was not the same day as the iPad mini uh, availability, although there's conflicting reports on that. Some sources say it was the same day. I don't think it was. I think it was just the same week. But I remember standing in line for the Lumia 920 at the AT&T store with... Um, I think there were five other people there 
to get the 920. And I like turned around in the hallway, and you can see this in the video I made that day, to, to look at the Apple store where the line for the iPad mini like stretched the entire length of the mall. And granted, these are not directly competing products, but it's like, man, maybe change that launch window if you're just, because it's embarrassing, right? But, um, th- th- yeah, man, this is not a new thing. Um, it's not just AT&T. A- AT&T actually is I'm, probably the least the, the least uh, offensive in this regard. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, we talked about the employees having early access to the 1020 and stuff, so there's some interest for them to be knowledgeable about this. Yeah, exactly. Actually, every time that I've gone in to go buy a Lumia device, the employees have been genuinely excited about it. Yeah. Um, with, with good reason, but, you know, any other Windows phone I've ever tried to, to purchase or inquire about, um, I've always been given the runaround. Uh, yeah, it's over there in the dark corner. Be sure to clear <laughs> the cobwebs out before you go over there. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, stuff like that. If you get bitten by a spider, uh, it's not our fault. Right. Stuff like that. And this is what, <laughs> you know, this is the problem that nascent or underdog platforms have in retail stores. Uh, and it's a vicious cycle that we've talked about on the show before as well. It's a small platform. So, There's not much public awareness, so people don't come into the store asking for it, so you're less inclined to push it, and there's a lot more to explain. It's a a harder sell, so if you're feeling, if you have an off day, if you're lazy, um, you know, you you don't want to do as much work to to push it. And because it's a new platform, not a new platform, because it's a smaller platform, uh, people are less likely to immediately like it. And so there's a higher return exchange rate, and that's even more work for you as a salesperson. Mm. So, and because of that attitude, it doesn't get pushed as hard in the retail stores. It remains a small platform, and this cycle continues until HP buys you and everyone cries, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and this, this is what happens. And it, the, since it's Microsoft, since they are obstinate and stubborn and have, for the moment, still have a lot of money to throw after this platform, they can keep pushing it and push Windows Phone to the growth rate that it might eventually need to, to succeed in on Moss. But well, it it started kind of gaining a little traction. That's what I mean. Lately. No, no, definitely yeah, it has. It, it's not it's not the in the place it was before. No, all I'm saying is uh, that's th- no thanks to the retail presence. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I just want to add a point that I've made a million times. Um, Microsoft will continue to have funds for Windows Phone as long as Android is around. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 Thank, thanks to so, licensing and, and yeah. uh, copyright stuff. So, Min, uh, go, I, I want to I move on to the next piece of mail, but uh, do you guys want to talk on this anymore before I um, close that out? No, not really. <laughs> it took me about uh, two or three minutes of staring at all these, trying to figure out why each one of the listener mail pieces has to me on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, because they're copyright right from the, yeah. the, the mail interface. I'm like, yeah. why are all these to Michael? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, man, thank you for writing in. I think um, retail is a mixed bag when it comes to cellular telephony, and it's going to continue to be, uh, to you know, that that's going to be the state of things for a while because it's retail. And you've, you have some real gems in there, um, and you have some real layabouts and slackers. And... Um, until somebody really comes along to shake up the retail telecommunications market, this is going to continue to be a problem, especially for small platforms. So thank you for writing in, and uh, good luck with your new 920 if you ever find one. <laughs> I, I move that all wireless retail associates should be trained more rigorously. Dude, absolutely. And, and, and it's not just training. It's not just throwing training at them. It's it's making the trainers care about it, too. I mean, the whole I mean, yeah. freaking culture is broken. We could say the thing yeah. for any kind of electronics retail sales. Exactly. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This isn't a smartphones problem. We don't sell the That's Nexus true. 7. Oh, we have 58 in stock. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's... Um, uh, I'll, I'll take the next one. You want to take the next one, Taylor? Yeah, please. Sure. Because I, I can pronounce this name. Uh, <laughs> from, from Aaron Linson. Uh, hey, Pocket Now team. I really like the job you guys are doing on the podcast with Jell, uh, Jellybean 4.3 in the latest Talkback beta, which at the time of this writing is... 3.5.0 beta 1, you're now able to label unlabeled buttons, a feature that iOS has had for a while. I've been an iPhone user since the 3GS. I'm really looking at the Moto X as my next phone. When do you guys think that Jelly Bean 4.3 will be pushed the Moto X? Do you think soon since Motorola is owned by Google now? I'm really looking forward to your answer and switching platforms. Thanks. Happy editing. Um, yeah, so Microsoft, or not Microsoft, Motorola is a Google company. It is for all intents and purposes, Google. 
But Google has made it a point not to, uh, I guess, anger its other partners by not giving Motorola any real special treatment. So Motorola gets the source code early, just like every other manufacturer. Um, and seeing as the software on the Moto X is mostly stock, you've got stock software, stock interface, stock everything, except for all of Motorola's pretty nice uh, add-on features like trusted devices, skip, um, battery saver mode, uh, always listening for Google Now, your voice recognition stuff, touchless Motorola control. Assist and yeah. Yeah, you've got all these things that are just kind of plug and play. So ideally, it shouldn't be too long. Um, now, there's a reason uh, it didn't come with 4.3, and that's because 4.3 was only announced a few weeks ago. But uh, but I, I do have a concern, though, because of that, the X8, not chip, but the whole Mobile computing system. system yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, because don't the, we, when we hit the updates come, the, uh, the company behind the SOC delivers their code package to the OEMs, who then build off of that, and then it finally comes to us. I'm just worried that because this is a unique, even though it's based off of, you know, crate cores and the Adreno GPU, it might be unique enough to cause a couple road bumps there. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's an old, yeah, yeah, I understand that, but it's also an old uh, chip. It's not a new chip, so... um, Right, but they're talking like microcode enhancements and the stuff that Motorola did to make this work better than the, the dual core S4s we had last year. Yeah, yeah, and it runs really well. But, right. um, yeah, it could slow some things down. But I think with it being a, Motor- I mean, a Google company, I think Motorola will be kind of pressured to get this update, update out quickly. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be like HTC where we're complaining about it. Or HTC of years past, maybe, where we'd be complaining yeah. about it six months down the road. Right. The biggest, the biggest problem will be carriers, at least in the U.S., and that's where this phone is mainly going to be so uh, I've got available. A question. So. What, yeah. what, 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 um, Aaron asks. <laughs> is that so? Is that so? Welcome what to the Jack it? Lemon podcast, everyone. No, so listen, the, what is this labeling unlabeled buttons deal? Uh, I don't know. What's your, your talk back, I guess? Uh, let me no, Google no. this before yeah, I make What is talk back? I'm not familiar I, with I also don't know what this is. This is talk why back, I was. Uh, hoping... When you have to enable it for your Pebble on a Samsung device, you, the folder is now open. Oh, <laughs> that thing. Yeah, it's for um, visually impaired people. So oh. I guess I guess you can uh, customize what it's not saying, but uh, may, maybe so. I don't I don't know. Label. That's a very good. How many apps does Google have? This is ridiculous. A lot. I made a video on it. They've got like forty some apps, uh. forty or fifty. They got a, a lot of apps. But yeah. Um, so this is being talked about uh, in a thread over on Google Groups called "Talkback Working Better in." Uh, in the latest release of an Android thing here. I, I, I do wish that somebody just knew what this was off the top of it. Yeah, it's just, it's the new beta of TalkBack. And um, apparently there, there's there been a problem where there's unlabeled graphics in the stock applications. Um, and, and there's yeah. been some complaints about there being still unlabeled images in basic stock apps. Like in messaging, there's an unlabeled image, which now in the new beta sounds official. So... Um, I don't know. I like I like our answer about the thing we knew about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh there's actually a developer Android uh developer.android.com I guess blog or, or API guideline about this that kind of explains labeling user interface elements. Okay. So if you want to read on that, you can just Google search talkback uh talk image back, labels talk back or something. labeling unlabeled buttons got me to that thread there. For example, uh, the following image button sets the content description for the plus button to add the uh, to the add underscore note string resource, which should be defined as add note for English language interface. So that's, basically, that's what I've always been saying. <laughs> yeah. What it, what it means is you can, uh, I guess, label things yourself if it's not labeled. Uh, that's my guess. I don't know how true that is. Joe Levi, where are you when we <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so. Uh, let's move on to thank you for, for writing in, Aaron. That was a cool cool question. I dig it. And uh, let's move on to the next one, sure, Stephen. Sure. Okay, next up we got an email here from Roy, Ho- Roy Hartanto who writes, Michael and crew, another great podcast once again. I assume he's talking about last week's. Yeah. <laughs> I must say your I wasn't podcast. on it. 
<laughs> that's, oh, why, so that's why it was great. It was neither even was better I, than so usual. <laughs> taking some offense to this already. Nice start. Uh, I must say, your podcast and roundtable is a real great listen. Love the way you guys argue and challenge each other. Well, that's why we do it. Yeah. Uh, each Screw and every you, one Steven. of you <laughs> brings something different to the show. I'm going to outlive both of you. I'm not coughing my lungs up here. So, <laughs> anyway, to my question. Don't make my friends me cough. <laughs> My friend and I were talking about the Lumia 1020, even though they're still waiting for it here in New Zealand. Uh, but the friends completely moved on from Windows Phone to Android now, picking up a Galaxy S4. Um, but uh, Roy's still holding on, hoping Microsoft's going to do something great with it. Uh, now, he thinks that Nokia's done more than its share of enhancements for the phone. Uh, used to use uh, an HD7 back in uh, Windows Phone 7 times uh, and moved up to Nokia and the uh, Lumia 800. And WoW, what is WoW? I'm not picking that up. I'm now using the Lumia 920. But what a big difference. He says the WP experience is really uh, lacking uh, without all the Nokia stuff, the Nokia Maps, Nokia Drive. And sorry, this is going on so long, folks. (laughs) Anyway, his friend says that Microsoft should port Windows RT to become the new Windows Phone OS. That's interesting, (laughs) kind of the opposite of what we were just talking about, and should ditch this current Windows Phone 8 deal completely. So he's migrating RT to the fully (laughs) smartphone space. Wants to know what we think of this idea. Uh, and uh, Roy thinks it really enhanced the Windows Phone experience, you know, being able to run full office on your phone and all that stuff. And it would even solve the app problem, which we are blaming on RT in the first place. Uh, the way that Google, uh, because of the Google related apps on Windows Phone and the other popular apps. Oh, I'm sorry, this one's getting away from here at the end. But <laughs> here's hoping that Microsoft would do something great with the phone soon. So it wants to know about this. Windows RT on Windows Phone 8 hardware idea. So, yeah, no, it's good. It was, it was well read. I, I, Taylor is telling me to stop laughing so hard because he's a jerk. It, this was like my question earlier. <laughs> like, I have really a simple, short question to ask, but I put it in like 800 words. <laughs> yeah. So, this is why I was laughing so hard. It has a preamp. Yeah. That's what it had. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you for sharing my problem, Roy, for being too verbose in most situations. Yeah. So, let's, <laughs> let's address this uh, pretty quickly. I, you know, um, we talked about how we feel about Windows RT earlier in the show. We quickly got out of our depth. I think no one is of the opinion that RT would make a better platform than Windows Phone uh, for a handheld use because of a variety of, of issues, but mainly, from my perspective, being that Microsoft has already done this before. You used to be able to run the full suite of Office stuff on Windows Mobile back in the day. Remember Pocket PCs with, like, the pocket PC version of Word and stuff like that. You know, yeah, yeah, right, That's exactly. A rubbish. <laughs> yeah, and it was heinous. Uh, you know, nobody needs to do that. No, excuse me. Nobody wants to build a PowerPoint presentation on a four inch screen or a five inch screen or whatever. Like, it's just not fun. It's not a good experience. Yes, technically it offers more ability. Yes, you can do it, but it's not enjoyable. I think we've entered an era where you have specialized tools for specialized jobs. You can do that kind of stuff on a tablet. You can do some some drawing art uh, in, incorporated into your presentation, or you can input some data into your spreadsheet on a tablet or on a computer. You don't really want to do that on your smartphone, I don't think. And more to the point, where is this idea coming from that RT has all the great apps out there and that Windows Phone 8 is the wasteland? Isn't it completely the other way it's around? It's completely the opposite, yeah. With over 170,000 apps in the Windows Phone Eight store. I mean, it just blows away the micro, the Windows store. Yeah, um, I'm not. Yeah, and especially if you watch the Surface RT after the buzz that I posted yesterday, uh, it's like there, there's a whole minute where all I do is scroll through the Windows store, and I'm just like, look at all this crap. <laughs> there's an amazing <laughs> amount of crap in here. <laughs> there's a lot of crap. So you know, it, 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 that, that's the problem. I think you know, and we covered a lot of this of our issues with RT earlier, as I say. So I think we all think. Um, that it's uh, it's not a good idea. Right. Yeah, I've right. I've written a couple articles um, on a full Windows uh, Windows 8 phone. Um, I can't remember what the name of the phone was, but there was a rumor, not even a rumor, it was actual an actual thing right around the time I started with Pocket Now about a phone running full Windows 8. Um, I can't find it. I've been looking for it, but uh, they did the- port. Uh, RT to maybe not fully, but to the HD two. 
Oh, right. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure someone yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> but, yeah. the, but the point I made in the editorial I wrote was that there's a reason that Windows Phone exists, and it's because a full desktop OS um, interface does not fit on a four to five inch phone. Exactly. Um, we don't have stylus fingertips, and uh, as as Steve Jobs would say, we would have to the phones would have to come with sandpaper so we could file our, our fingertips down to actually use it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just not a good experience. And if you alter the interface of Windows RT to work on a phone, then you're basically creating Windows Phone all over again. So. I have this image in my head right now of someone putting bugles on their fingers in order to. <laughs> Operate <laughs> talk screen. Oh, the, the snacks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just way to use your phone. <laughs> so that is awesome. Yeah, Roy, thank you for for writing in. I think, uh, yeah, this is we've 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 covered this a bit, and um, I totally get where you're coming from and in your thought process. But uh, definitely, I think we're 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 on the right track now without um, putting RT in even more places in the world. I think it's 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 already doing its job where it is such as it is. Uh, this uh, next email comes from Jack Bolton uh, from Manchester, UK, who's currently using an SGS3 as his daily driver, and he listens to the podcast on the car on the way home from his girlfriends, and he always looks forward to the episodes. Well, Jack, you're welcome for yet another 14-hour episode of the <laughs> weekly. Um, really, thank you for listening to us, though. Uh, and uh, this is more of a fun talking point than a question, but here it goes. And you're right, it is a fun uh, talking point, Jack. Uh, Jack says, we're in an age where phones are getting thinner and thinner, although buttons, etc., can easily be reduced in size or moved around the device. What is going to happen to the standard 3.5 millimeter headphone socket we all know <laughs> and love when phones finally get too thin to fit it? It can't be long away. Are we going to see a revolution in headphone socket technology or an annoying new wave of fiddly adapters? It's an interesting thought and one which could become a bit of an issue in the future, perhaps. Thanks for keeping me thoroughly entertained and keep up the good work. Jack, Jack, thank you for writing in. This is a cool, cool email. This is very much on my mind recently as well. Because, Why is that? Well, I have a Nexus 4, and the day after I got the thing, I put the bumper case on because I don't want it to end up like Joe's Nexus 4. <laughs> right. The problem, though, is the cutout on the bumper is too damn small for me to plug in my headphones. Stupid. I have big-ass headphones with, like, an 8-foot cord on them designed for home use. It's not the, the slim, you know, the iPod <laughs> connector there. Right. I finally, this weekend, ordered an adapter from... Uh, Mono price, a little standoff, so I can actually plug headphones into my smartphone for the first time in months. So, I'm very excited about that arriving in the next day or two. Yeah, that's my little man. hijack of that. But that's, I mean, that's it's not quite what he was asking, but it's along the same problem. We've been seeing a desire to tighten things up, smaller spaces, and for me at least, it's already causing problems. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to see the 3.5 uh, inch jack go away anytime soon. There are smaller ones that you can get a. Uh, well, the, it's a three thirty the, the second. The older two two point five inch millimeter one was the bane of our existence for a long time, because remember we actually went in the opposite direction. We, old we, phones of old had a two point five millimeter jack that was a specifically designed for like, oh, yeah. for like headphones for phones. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember a three and a half millimeter headphone jack was like a big sell for a long time because suddenly you had a phone that you didn't need a stupid adapter for or dumb headphones for. You could plug in your own headphones right to your phone. <laughs> And that was back in the in the era when phones getting bigger was an okay thing because they could do more. And then that was before we started slimming. So yeah, but which is that the one you were talking about, or were you talking about a, a yet a, a third jack design? No, that's the one I was. I think I was only three thirty second rather than the the millimeter. But yeah. I am looking through right now. I have a, a case next to me of various <laughs> electronic components. I'm trying to find a three point five uh, inch or millimeter uh, jack so I can see just how thick the component actually is. It's not. I mean, with the sizes we're talking about now, where we're just starting to push down to six millimeters, I'm pretty sure the jacks are still significantly smaller than that. Well, the and jack, that's not a yeah, stick the, point. the jack is, but the the components surrounding it, like yeah. I mean, if you've ever seen like a three and a half millimeter headphone jack like removed from the module, like it's big. There's like a big old cube on it and whatever. Like it's it's like a big old clunky thing, and that's why HP didn't build it into the Veer or Palm didn't design it. Into oh, the Veer. that was the worst thing with the little uh, te little the tether, the magnetic yeah, adapter yeah. thing. Yeah, but the thing that the nice thing about that was that um, you you didn't have to have this big clunky headphone jack, so the phone could actually be ridiculously small. 
And um, it wasn't cool to carry around the adapter all the time, but it did force me and probably some other buyers into getting Bluetooth headphones finally. Uh, and yep. I've got a bunch of Bluetooth nice. headphones and speakers. Yeah. Um, I actually only have one pair of wired headphones that I use, and I'm, I'm using them right now, the uh, yeah, gonna... Audio-Technica uh, ATH-M50s. But, uh, yeah, uh, I would be cool with phones without headphone jacks. That's just no. me. I would. I mean, no. it wouldn't be ideal for everyone, but I would be okay with it. You know, my only problem is with uh, with using Bluetooth headphones as my primary headphones. You can't pocket them. Most of them, you cannot just like ball them up and put them in your pocket like you can with earbuds. They're they're big. You know, they have to house a battery. Well, what no, about- um, mine are pretty small. I have uh, J- uh, Jaybirds and uh, the Blue Buds X, and they're they're really small. They're not much larger than your standard earbuds. And uh, they come connected by one cable, and I just leave it around my neck. When I'm carrying those, they just hang around my neck all the time. But what about the ability to share music if you only have Bluetooth on your phone and no hardware audio connector? I was at the beach the other weekend. Friends and I wanted to listen to some music. All we had were our phones, and we ended up finding, like, a cassette adapter in someone's car, plugged into a boom box. (laughs) There we got all the stereo going. Yes. most people don't have Bluetooth stereos lying around their house, so you miss out on any sort of impromptu beach well, parties. <laughs> well, point. I don't. I guess I'm again an anomaly because I carry around a Bluetooth speaker uh, of in my bag. <laughs> you know, get out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> well, I, I, I was. Uh, I wanted to write an article about it, and I, I, I forgot to send it to Tony as an, an idea, and I need to write this down so I don't forget it again. But uh, I use Bluetooth so much more than I used to. Um, yeah. I use the Pebble, like on my phone, I have five, four or five Bluetooth connections at all times. Uh, I connect to four or five different Bluetooth devices every so single like day. Keyboard, watch, mouse, maybe? <laughs> no, uh, right, now, right now I have my car, the Blue Buds X, the uh, Logitech Ultimate Ears Boom speaker, uh, the Pebble, and uh, something else. I'm forgetting something, but yeah, there's something else too. Mainly audio stuff. Yeah, all audio and my watch, and uh, if I could use Bluetooth for more things, which I eventually will, I probably would. We would hope that uh, Bluetooth finds a, a you know more penetration into uh, into our audio lifestyles, and maybe at this time, a decade from now, uh, we will learn uh, that we never needed wires in the first place. Everything has Bluetooth in it, and even even the boom boxes of today. Yeah, but you've got wires inside the phone and. <laughs> <laughs> Get Sorry, out of that face. <laughs> hey, I hated uh, that. I did the review on that Zen's wireless charger, and like 90% of the comments are, it's not wireless if you have to plug it into the wall. Oh, my God. Hey, I'm, Apple. Oh, fr- fine, I'm so, fine. Then nothing so is ever wireless because there's always a wire somewhere. It's, I, don't, even get me, don't even get me started. I, whenever I post a wireless charging piece, I'm like, I just have to resolve not to answer 95% of the comments because they're all <laughs> people who don't get it because they've never One used the, it. We're going to go into that in a second, actually. We, we okay. do have to move on, though. Taylor, will you read the next email? Uh, Jack, thank you for writing in. That was an awesome question. I wish we had read it earlier in the show because that's uh, will, a cool um, bit. I just wanted to read like one of the most thumbs-up comments on that review really quickly. Um, it was from me. Oh, it's not one of the most anymore but anyway somebody was talking about that they said you know it's not truly wireless it's less helpful and less useful than just plugging your phone in yeah you can't use your phone and charge it at the same time all those standard not very well thought out arguments against wireless charging it's there and if you want it you can use it if it's not you don't have to but my uh my comment back was there are so many counter arguments to this that i I don't even know where to begin I could rant on why wireless charging is great and provide counter arguments to all the reasons it's not all day long because it, it is great. If I could have a desk that had wireless charging built in, I just sit my phone down and charge. I don't have to worry about whether it's charging when I'm using it because it charges when I'm not using it. You yeah. know, I don't have to plug yeah, it in. So, yeah. I mean, I could go on all day, but uh, yeah, next piece. Hey, GM <laughs> just announced a bunch of cars coming out next year with built in wireless charging docks that's going to be what really pushes us forward see now that that seals it because that we are going to skip the next mail we're going to have steven read the last mail but uh taylor (laughs) Taylor, i want you to read the kenneth meadows the the second the last mail on the list okay uh what happened to the other one we're not reading it just stop stop it Uh, just go okay okay hey guys it's been a few months since i've wrote uh switched to a nexus 4 and bought the wireless charger at google cells 
that Google sells. I can't read anymore. I went to the bathroom and I lost my reading abilities. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that I love wireless charging, first time using it. I now wonder, though, is there a wireless charger designed for a car? Would something like this be moddable? Has anyone on the team, Michael, dared to try this yet? Love the podcast. Hope you guys keep rolling in year two. In, on, on, in. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Meadows, thank okay. you for that, and thank you, Taylor, for just going with us because it, was the, it would have been the perfect segue. So, yeah, yes. wireless charging in a car. Stephen, what were you just saying? Yeah, there was something on the feed yesterday about GM looking into this. We also saw a while back I, one of the, the Asian uh, companies was doing this in their cars. More and more manufacturers will be offering like a uh, – in the, the center console, you can just drop your phone in there, and it will charge on – 2014 models and moving forward yeah and it is the convenience of it you don't you're one not you shouldn't be using your phone at the time so not being able to use it isn't an issue it's it'll just it'll keep the phone topped off all day long it sounds great it does and yeah we saw some of those in-car units uh, out of cars just the the units themselves uh, by virtue of cheese demonstration at ces uh, where we had an interview, and that was a lovely time. And uh, you know, this kind of stuff in cars, people have been doing it for a while, Kenneth. Um, back in the days of the, the Palm Touchstone being the only wireless charging game in town, people were gluing Palm Touchstones to their <laughs> to their dashboards and plugging them into their car adapters. And the nice thing about that was they were magnetic. So the phone would latch on to the Touchstone and not let go, even if you went over some potholes and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case with the Nexus 4 charger because it's just rubber, and it's just rubber on glass, yeah. and that, that'll it's, just bounce right off of there, which is stupid. That's how a lot of them are now. They're yeah, just, which is dumb. Yeah. I, I, I never, you know, I understand that introducing magnets and metal and stuff is, is harder, but it was so nice to just drop a phone on the touchstone and just have it stick there. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. can we, speaking of phones and metal and magnets, uh, we haven't mentioned it yet on this podcast, but those Sony lens accessory things. Yeah. Um, the, we that is <laughs> yeah. supposed to attach with magnets. That's not going to work. Have you tried? I, I went and got some magnets and tried sticking them to the phones, and they don't <laughs> stick too good. Well, if uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, like the Moto X, the um, the skip accessory is a magnet. It's a magnet with an NFC chip in it, and you just stick it to the back of the phone. So, I don't know. It, it, it might work. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice. I, I love this, and uh, it's going to depend I will be a doing lot on. On the, the manufacturer of materials they use, it, where they are yeah. in the phone. Yeah, exactly. And you're going to be doing ideally, a piece on that, Tony? Let's yeah, go. well, you you proposed it. I did. I didn't, I didn't know if it got approved or not. Oh, it did get approved, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the response was K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I have a friend on Facebook. I used to work with him at Best Buy. Uh, three, four days ago, he posted a picture about a guy at Best Buy who uh, rigged his car with a Qi charger. And it looks mostly factory it looks really nice and uh, i've been thinking about doing this and some other internal modifications to my car i proposed a couple things for some content and uh this is one of the things that i would like to do as well is awesome. how to uh, how to rig your own furniture to be wireless charging uh, oh wow. yeah because you can hide pads like right beneath the laminate layer if you have like a, a formica kind of thing going on and yeah, you can just so, drop your phone on a particular area of your desk and people have done that there's some cool youtube videos on that yeah that uh, brandon and i have your fridges and furniture that's what you used to do <laughs> <laughs> but yeah brandon and i have uh, thrown this idea back and forth for a couple of months and it's something i really want to do as well as um how to mod my own car with wireless charging, I don't really know if there's a good place to do it in my car, but I can try. And um, the other is mounting, instead of having my stereo, mounting a Nexus 7 because it's the perfect size. Yeah. Oh. So. so watch out for that. And if you, if you do happen to be uh, an, auto, an auto buff and you like modifying stuff, stay tuned for Taylor's mods there. If you want to look up uh, this wireless charging stuff, the Qi that we've been referring to is the wireless charging standard that's the most popular right now. It is spelled, though, Q-I. <laughs> So um, it's the, one of those confusing things. The first time you said that in this podcast a couple of minutes ago, I'm like, <laughs> Michael saw Cheese demonstrate some chargers? <laughs> yeah, Cheese demonstration at CES. You didn't get, a, you didn't get one of those nice fromage uh, demos? <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Power Mat, uh, who is now part of Duracell, um, they, ha they don't use the Cheese standard. They use their own, obviously. It's giant Boo. pain. Boo it is, is right. It is. But they have some really nice ideas. Um, I stopped by their booth at CES the last two years, and some of the ideas are things that I've been talking about for 
a long time how wireless charging can help in so many different ways. And Who had the mat that could like move around so it could you could put the phone anywhere on it? Was that yeah. them? Yeah, like I the think that was them. Thing? Yeah. That was cool. yeah. Well, and um, Chi, oh no, 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 yeah. no, that was Chi. That was Chi with it with the moving yeah. LEDs that like yeah, 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 swiped yeah. over to the yeah, that was cool. Um, but to that to that same point, uh, one of the things that PowerMat was talking about at CES this this year was um, getting rid of re- like removable batteries and kids' toys having integrated batteries with induction charging, and they would sell a toy bin. And the whole bottom of the toy bin would be wireless charger. Yeah. So you drop your toys into this bin, and they're all charged at all times. That's what I need. For so a, I need a toy bin. I need a I need a smartphone and tablet <laughs> toy bin because I'm I know so that, tired that, of the cables. That uh, the picture, the video that you post, that was you, right? To Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was hilarious because that's like me every day. Like yeah. when I when I lay down to go to sleep. I plug everything in, and everything just kind of lights up. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I realized it, and I'm like, I have to shoot an, an Instagram video of this for the Pocket Now account. So Instagram.com slash Pocket Now if you want to see what we're talking about. Hashtag power up. Uh, last <laughs> mail in the thing. That was awesome. I could talk about wireless charging all day, but I am actually losing my voice, and we we, we got to go. Uh, Kenneth, thank you. And Stephen, close us yeah. out on listener mail. Okay, we've got a mail here from Chiwi Blue. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He wants to say, hi, great job. Always uh, checks the site eagerly every day. Cool, cool. Uh, oh, and uh, tells us not to worry about mispronouncing the name. So if Chiwi is not what it is there, yeah, it's cool. It's just a nickname anyway. <laughs> to the question. <laughs> uh, if his name was Chiwi Blue, this would be awesome. Like that, if that were I'd his legit it. name. Yeah. yeah. Chiwi Blue? It sounds okay. like a, a celebrity or something. Or like a flavor of some sort of snack. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chiwi wants to get our opinions on nav buttons. On screen, like as the uh, the hot new thing now with Android, capacitive but off screen, or more like iOS where the buttons are sort of inside each app, or Samsung's mixed approach, which do we prefer and why? Good I question. was supposed to do a video on this a few weeks ago and I never did it. <laughs> well, then you seem to be the perfect person to answer first. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't do it because I didn't have all the stuff to do the video with and I was going to do a written piece and I didn't yeah. do that either. Uh, nobody cares. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Michael. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will say this. I despise physical hardware buttons for anything other than power and volume. Me too. And, um, and camera. You got to say camera too. Yeah. And what camera. about waterproof and phones? phones? No. No? Okay. No, because you can do a waterproof phone without physical buttons. Okay. Uh, but uh, like with liqu- Liquipel and stuff, um, I have actually had the most luck and the most, uh, I guess, p- personal positive response to on-screen buttons. They take up space, yes, and they effectively make your display smaller, yes, but they also are more um, flexible than something that is hard physically soldered into the phone um, because they hide away when you're watching a video. They rotate yeah. when you rotate the phone. Uh, they change orientation, and they can be customized if you so wish. Uh, but, because, but the one problem that I never got with capacitive buttons is that once in a while, I'll hit an on-screen button by mistake. What do you, what do you mean? Like I'm trying to touch something on the, the bottom edge of the, on the screen that's part of the app, but instead I hit the back button. Or vice versa. I'm trying to hit the back button, and I hit something in the app instead. With capacitive, there was enough space that that was never an issue. Um, yeah, that that's also an, an issue with uh, on-screen buttons. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. With on-screen buttons, I I, I, I prefer having the space between, like a little bit of bezel yeah. there between the screen. Yeah, and the buttons. I, I found on the Moto X that I'm actually um, hitting the on-screen buttons a little more, and it feels like the the space for the on-screen buttons is a little smaller than normal. That's probably just me, but that's what it feels like. Yeah, because I. I'm uh, like I go to hit an icon and I do hit back and return home and stuff. Well, the, the thing is that that problem is not unique. The mispress problem is not unique to on-screen buttons because I remember my first use of the Lumia 900. I was always hitting yep. the home button because it was too close to the screen. Like so, you can yep. replicate that problem even with off-screen buttons. My preference, I, I rather I rather like capacitive keys because uh, like like on the HTC One X and the HTC One, I just like knowing that these buttons are always there. 
Uh, I don't really care about the screen real estate thing. I just like knowing that they're there consistently. They're there even when the display is off, which for some reason gives me a measure of, of comfort. But they're not a physical button, which is just the dumbest thing ever and should have been retired years ago. And they're not the second. No, excuse me. That's not. That's the second dumbest thing ever. The third dumbest thing ever is having capacitive keys alongside a physical button, which is just just yeah. madness. <laughs> just makes me want to jump out a window. And so, yeah, capacitive I, buttons off the screen is, is is my favorite thing. When I when I go from using the the Note two to a, a phone with capacitive or on screen buttons, I feel myself like pressing into the button <laughs> so trying right, to right. Yeah, yeah, I hate it, it so much. Not to mention response, tapping yeah. the wrong side to go back, which is another thing. Yeah, can we just there hate, be... hate on Samsung's buttons? <laughs> can we just get a universal button layout for everything? No, see, no, oh, no, 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 I don't like that because I like manufacturers being able to tweak some things. Like, that's part of the thing in Windows Phone. I like consistency, but I, it is kind of annoying to have manufacturers constrained to do back, home, which, you know, makes sense, and the Bing search button, which used to be useful and now is no longer useful because yeah, it's not context sensitive. I hate that. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, manufacturers should be able to yeah, do that. Yeah, so want. to answer the question, it's entirely 100% personal preference. Yep. Um, no one answer. Yeah. yeah, there there is no one answer, no one size fits all. Um, but uh, yes, I will stick by my answer in saying that on-screen buttons are the most flexible or versatile yeah, they because are. they can be changed um, later in an update. If Google adds a functionality, anything with hard buttons, uh, capacitive, physical, whatever they may be, they are fixed that way. There's no changing them with on-screen buttons. They can be simply updated through a software update. Do you guys remember uh, that one, I think it was an HTC phone, that had the capacitive buttons that turned when you rotated the phone? Uh, that was yeah. the... Yeah, what was that? I thought it was I the don't one, remember. but it was like before the DNA, right? Yeah, it was right before the DNA. It was DNA. a while ago. Yeah. Oh, Droid, uh, Droid 4G? Was but that wouldn't it? it be cool? Those were just, I think it had a little image of the, the icon of each orientation. Little. What if yeah. they had like a separate little screen? Like you know, those keyboards with... OLED yeah. D buttons. I mean, you could, you know, set an icon there. It would be, it would uh, react to the app. It would work just like an on-screen button, but it would be off-screen. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. like the. I can't remember where I saw it, but there's a. I think a phone, or at least a render of a phone, with a dedicated display at the very bottom for oh. the home screen dock. Yeah, that was the capacity. Uh, the Samsung Captivate, wasn't it? No. Yeah, there was about? one Samsung that had a little secondary like yeah, app that was, that was in the middle the, of the oh, keyboard. It wasn't the Captivate. It was the, uh, the oh, what was it? It started with a C. It was the, everyone made fun of it, but I liked it because it wasn't Poor a separate shit. screen. There was like a black painted band over the screen. Oh, to, to that's not what I'm it. thinking. Of. You know what I'm? No, it, it is though. No, there was one that had it was a secondary screen in the middle of the keyboard. Double the keyboard oh, was the double, the LG double thing. The LG whatever. slider. Yeah, wasn't it double double something? Uh, Can't remember the name. Uh, I'm looking for it. It was an AT&T thing. LG Double Play. Double Play. <laughs> double Shot, Double Play, something like that. Yeah, LG Double Play C729, I believe. Yeah. One of those cool people used to factors. play around with this stuff. Exactly. We like, ex you know, and the thing is nobody buys them because they end up being crap. Because nobody wants to do a split QWERTY all the time. And uh, yeah. the dock. I yeah. I, I would have bought it, though. I did. I didn't, but I would have. It, it would have brought back memories for me because I started with the uh, what was it, Kyocera something Echo. I can't. <laughs> no, Kyocera. <laughs> God, I like that thing. Come on, <laughs> that's not possible. This is neat. <laughs> well, do you like the the NEC clone of it? Oh, uh, that one from the uh, from, uh, from MWC. Yeah. That looked that looked so much better. I was really upset better. then to hear about them getting out of the market. That yeah. was cool. Kia well, Sarah Strobe. That was the name of it. That was Strobe. that was yes. one of my first phones. Yeah. So let's on Altel. Guys, I've just Altel. Oh, I forgot about Altel. Hey, um, I've just conducted an informal poll on Twitter. I said, hope you all like two hour podcasts. <laughs> and uh, positive responses came in from such notables as Mobile Dom, Paul Thwong. Uh, Myron Gunn, Luke Sills, Joel Rushworth. Everyone says a two-hour podcast is right up their alley. And, uh, you know, that's fortunate because I think we just hit the two-hour mark. Um, 207. But I for, don't for the I don't know for live time. Yeah, yeah, I think it's about two hours. So um, that's pretty cool. But we don't want to make it a three-hour podcast. So what do you say, guys? Should we wrap this one up? 
Do I'm it? hungry, I and time. I've already taken yeah. 30 bathroom breaks. Actually, me too. <laughs> this is the first podcast I've actually not withstood the entire time I've had to go. I must be getting old. I haven't um, held out so far, and I had an entire glass of water, so I am on uh, time oh, ticking away. Yeah, you. I had coffee and two cups of water, so... Yeah. <laughs> Diuretic hour. So yeah. I think we're uh, I think we're good to go. But listen, gents, it was a, it was a pleasure. I want to thank everyone for writing in on the listener side. Those mails were great. And uh, remember, guys, please, if you didn't hear your mail read, we're very sorry. Either um, we just didn't get to it, or your mail was too long. They really can't be too long because, as you can tell, we have a real trouble staying sticking to ninety minutes as it is. So and we can't read. No. That's exactly right. We also cannot read. <laughs> um, I can't read. <laughs> but I also want to thank Stephen Shank, who joined us at, on very short notice uh, for, the, for the show today, and um, Taylor Martin, who joined us despite his first reaction to asking if he wanted to come on the show being, no, that sounds like a pain. I don't like We're going to be there again. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to Stephen. Uh, screw you to Taylor. And, I didn't uh, even complain about my cough, so know, you're welcome. That's true. That's true. God, my voice is killing me. I'm watching fighter movies tonight with Your friends. Voice We're going to watch me. Top Gun and Iron Eagle together. It's going to be a I great just time. Just scream at the screen the whole time. That's all I'm going to do. Yeah. It was, <laughs> nice, we're, nice. We can't wait for the 80s music. And uh, that that is going to do it, though. So, gentlemen, no. Thank you very much. Uh, listeners, you must find us on Twitter, where we have this kind of banter all the time, just in 160-character spurts. Stephen is not often posting, but he is at Stephen Schenk, S. D e p h e n s c h e n c k. I posted this month. I'm glad that you did. <laughs> uh, Taylor is at Casper Tech, C a s p e r t e k. Also on the back of his Moto X. And as always, you can find me at Captain Two Phones. You can follow Pocket Now officially at Pocket Now on Twitter, as Pocket Now on Instagram, Facebook, and Google Plus. And if you want to share opinions with other listeners online, you can do so. Forums.pocketnow.com. It's a fun place to hang out. You should come. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes or Xbox Music. And if you have a topic, question, or suggestion for the podcast, we just want to say, hey, send a brief email, please, to podcast at pocketnow.com. Thanks for listening. See you all next week. Can we can we end with some tears for fears? Yes. Yes, we can. Sometime. Yeah, let's do it. But not today. Oh. Shit. I know. Oh, my God, you're doing it. I am. Yes. Oh, I wish that would have been awesome if you were doing it just, just then. Shout. Uh, Shout. Let it all out. That's the Tears for Fears you went for? Yeah.